Well, look what we have here. Another anime fighting game. Welcome to another FTCR weird discussion thing. This time talking about the pseudo slash kind of spin-off sequel thing to Persona 5. Strikers slash Scramble slash whatever you want to call it. It's me, Stefan, and uh, Chris is per- at the moment of recording is currently playing the game, so he wasn't able to join. But I've got three special guests here to help me ramble on for about it for probably about two hours or so. Uh, we got Dr. Catherine. Hello. We got the great Clement. Hi. And Miss Caro Taro. Sup, y'all. <laughs> So yeah, I think uh, we all like. I'd say we all, we all, we all like Persona and Persona Five and uh, adjacent Persona things. I assume. I I, I I didn't actually check in on you guys. No, beforehand. I hate Persona. I hate the series. Damn it! I buy the games just to mock them. Wait, this isn't about Sonic. <laughs> no, we're not talking about Sonic. I, I thought we were talking I'm about out. SMT mainline SMT. You <laughs> lied to me, Stefan. Shit. Yeah, the, I was sorry. The, uh, actually, no, I, I lied. This is actually our SMT three Nocturne discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that frame rate. It's looking real good. Well, Switch users be like, but it's portable. <laughs> So yeah, just to, to quickly uh, jump in, just to do a little like setup thing. Uh, well, first, first, if you're interested, uh, me, Chris, and Steven did a discussion on both Persona 5 and Royal last year. So that there will be a little link in the description uh, tag uh, wherever, so you can so you can check that out if you want. Uh, we all we, we we all we all pretty much like we 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 all I would say we all pretty much liked it. Where I I would I would consider myself a fan. <laughs> I would say you guys are all probably fans of Persona 5 slash Royal, right? Yes, I would consider sure. myself a fan of 2017 critically acclaimed Persona 5. Yes, thank you. I did not play original P5, but I played Persona 5 Goro Edition. I mean, Royal. <laughs> and I played Vanilla, but not Royal, so hey. Ooh. I played vanilla P5, and for Royal specifically, I loaded up my friend's save file so I could only play the content from January onwards. <laughs> so technically, I know all the Royal stuff. So yeah. Come on, you, you, you at least know all the Royal stuff, right? Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I know what happens in Royal, because I, I, I spoiled myself, because I wasn't going to buy uh, Royal since I put so much time and effort into the original game. You know, nothing against it. It's just I, I spent all the time with the original, and Atlas has this track record of making a better enhanced version of a game they've already released. <laughs> you know, they did it with Persona 4, they did it with Persona 3, and of course they do it with Persona 5 Honestly, again. The but when they do, and I'm like, when whenever they announce and release Persona 6, it's going to be the same thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do I want to buy this at launch, or do I want to wait a few years <laughs> for the good version where they're going to fix it? It's things? vintage Atlas stuff. They're going to do it for sure, but knowing how much I show for Persona, I'm going to get it launch day. <laughs> yeah, sure. that, 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 that is all fail. It's more so just, it's more so just Justin KX, where we're probably going to spoil and mention stuff about Royal, so it's like, just want just wanted to be sure. Now we go, oh, I'm we go aware to... of Sumer and, and, and Dr. Maruki, the hot therapist guy, you know. <laughs> therapist in massive quotation marks. Yes, to put it lightly. <laughs> so so to go over to Stryker, just just for a little like background regarding Strikers, because Strikers is kind of it's kind of a weird thing, because it's like, oh yeah, Persona 5 comes out, it does super, super well, so you get like a whole bunch of like spin-offs, and you get like the dancing spin-off, you get the Persona Q2, which is heavily Persona 5 focused, you get like a couple other like little media things like the anime, the manga, the stage play. And then they announced that, oh, they're doing, like, yeah, the, the Persona 5 Royal, which is the updated version with new content and, like, thick, basically the version that, like, the, the version that should have been the first, like, all that kind of stuff. And then they also announced that, oh, Koei Tecmo was going to be doing a spinoff uh, in the Warrior style for Persona 5. And it's like, I, I, I pretty much kept, like, myself spoil, spoiler free from, like, pretty much the entire, like release span so i was like i didn't see any footage i didn't really look into it so i was like so all of what i knew was that it was that and also that it was being treated as a direct sequel to persona 5 which is probably what interested me the most because it's like oh like warriors games the most i've ever like no i mean i play a little bit of hyrule warriors but other than that i'm pretty much blind to warriors games so that was something that like i didn't like that wouldn't 
like come out to me right away, but just hearing, oh, an actual sequel to Persona 5, like an actual full-blown story that was basically, I mean, like, the, the title is Persona 5 Scramble slash Strikers P5S P52, so it was like, oh, like, that that was the most exciting thing about, like, that, like, for wanting to play it. And then it came out, uh, came out around, I think around February, uh, February 2020, uh, a few months after Royal came out in Japanese, and then went over a year before it finally <laughs> ended up coming out in England. Like, that was the biggest thing in all of 2020, people going, when is Striker, when is Scramble coming out? When is Scramble coming out? When is Scramble coming out? And it took like three months before the actual release date for them to be like, oh yeah, Scramble, uh, Scramble's coming out. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they kind of snuck up that date, didn't they? Because Atlas is just like, oh, by the way, here well, you go. Also, bye. Didn't, didn't it get leaked? Did I remember they were gonna they were gonna announce it at uh, the game commercials? I mean, the game awards, and then like <laughs> game commercials. A couple days before, some people like got some leak that, and then they put they did like a oops. We made a fucky lucky. The Phantom Thieves stole our our release footage. Like, Wait, I do Twitter. remember that. Yeah. Yeah, they accidentally <laughs> released the trailer or like a week earlier, so it was like, oops. But that, that I remember, remember that. Like, but yeah, they they cut it so close as far as like announcing it. Atlas has been really bad about dubs lately. Like, yeah, and I. So I f- I feel like partially, like, I mean, it, it probably has to be pandemic-related issues, right? Like, especially, like, with it, it feels like that was what they wanted it to come out earlier in uh, 2020, but it's like everything shut it down, so everything had to be, like, paused and take took a lot longer to get, like, get everything, like, translated and dubbed and, like, all like, figured out. Also, I, I don't know if it was just me, but I, I definitely felt like some of the dub voices, like, I love Matt Mercer, but some of his lines sound like he was recording in his closet, which is pretty, it's pretty on brand for Yusuke, but... Well, if I remember correctly, I don't, I don't remember where I read this, but if I remember correctly, I think the recording, like, equipment that you would u- normally use in, like, a voice recording booth was sent to the voice actor's home, yeah. so they were doing their voice yeah. recording lines, like, in their houses. That, that makes so sense that there would like, be some, some, like, I, I felt like there was a lot more inconsistency, and that makes sense, because even if you have the right equipment, like, the mm-hmm. room they're gonna be in is different, probably. Especially because I'd say the, like, the, the consist, the most consistent issue, I mean, like, there are, like, some, I mean, we'll get into, like, more, like, discussion of gameplay and stuff like that, but the most consistent issue I found was that the sound mixing is kind of bad in a lot of ways. <laughs> It's like there's so many times where like certain characters are much louder than there are so like so like Yusuke is like very quiet and very muffled, and there are certain ones that are like crystal crystal clear, and then it's like like during the like during the battles, and it's like the the music is overpowering the dialogue, so you can barely hear it. Hear it. So it's like I feel like I'm like just come on, just put put your decibels up just a tad, just put your decibels up a tad, or put the music <laughs> decibels up just a tiny bit. It's like it, it feels like, again. I think yeah, it's partial of like oh there were there were working with what what uh, audio like what audio files they had but i'm like would it really sound that much better or worse if you just tweak that audio the audio you got or, slightly i'm a big fan of games putting in just basic sliders for voice uh, voice music sfx because not everyone process processes audio the same way i tend to need to put voices higher and turn music down so i i don't like i agree if if they weren't going to do a better job balancing it, at least let us balance it to our taste. So not like that I looked at the options menu or paid attention to it or anything in Strikers, but did they, did they not have that option? There was not that Strikers? option. Really? Yep, yeah, there wow. was not. Like, uh, you know, like most games I feel like do have like a voice slider and a mm-hmm. BGM slider and often also like a sound effect slider. There was nothing. That's Unless kind of they serious. patched it in after launch, but I remember that was one of the first things I looked for, and it wasn't there. Yeah, no, I was the same way because I was like, "Oh, this audio sounds so weird. Let me go and fix it." I went to the settings and nothing, and I was like, "Oh no." Uh oh. And there's, I don't think, I don't think Persona Five had that either. But like, the sound mixing was all perfectly fine in that game, so it wasn't like it didn't, it didn't come out as an issue in there. But it's like, yeah, with here, it's like if you have like an issue that you can't really solve, at least give the players like a way to solve it themselves. I, unless somebody modded it in the PC version, which I'm maybe they did. Like, I'm yeah, which version? Which version did everyone in the call play? Because I played PS4. Same. 
PlayStation 4. I played the Switch version. More specifically, handheld Switch version. <laughs> this, was like, this was okay. This was before I got the smart TV for my room with the dock and everything. Gotcha. So I would play all my Switch games in handheld, and the frame rate, which we'll get to later. <clears throat> oh really? <clears throat> I will say the P- the the PS4 version was very good in terms of frame rate. I don't really remember seeing any frame rate issues. Yeah, I did not notice any uh, any bad performance. Uh, from the yeah, it, it ran perfectly fine which i mean like it's basically yeah, it, it's a it's a late ps4 game that like pretty much looks identical to per, like the original persona 5 so like if there was having some issues i'd be like wait a minute but it's like no there well, wasn't well koei tecmo's like it's a very different engine and the amount of stuff on screen is going to be very different for a muso game compared to like an rpg uh and my understanding is that the issues with like stupid load times um Mm -hmm. on the switch version are more like don't i might not be getting this right but i I think i heard it was an issue with koei tecmo's engine not performing as well on switch it's not really an atlas issue Uh, i guess it kind of makes sense yeah yeah yeah, and I do. Yeah, I do. I do think. Yeah, ju- and now ju- jumping into mostly like how the game is itself. I thought like the most interesting thing. Yeah, because again, I went in pretty much blind, so I had no idea how exactly the gameplay was gonna like go and how the game was gonna be structured. Because I was like, oh, like I, I was familiar with like I've seen like how Dynasty Warrior games play. So I'm like, I had a feeling of what it was gonna look like. I just didn't know how the game was gonna function. So like when I played it, and it's like, oh, you, you get you get dropped in the beginning part where you have that little section of like, oh, you're fighting like the huge like swab of enemies. It's, like okay this is yeah just dynasty warriors with uh with joker and it's like oh you get that but then as the game like once like the game starts proper you're like oh shit this is like pretty much persona 5 like straight up only instead of uh, turn-based battles you have the you have like the the full-fledged combat and it's like everything like that was it pretty much everything that you can think of that was in persona 5 is in strikers in some way so it's like it does very much feel like that in that that kind of fusion it, it, it doesn't it doesn't so much feel like oh koei tecmo doing a persona game it very much feels like atlas and koei tecmo kind of blending their two sensibilities together to make a straight like a serious persona 5 sequel with that engine yeah coming from someone who hasn't really played any dynasty warrior games um going into this one like i ne- again never really played any games with that gameplay before so i think at least from me having that first impression i think they blended the gameplay pretty well where it's like it's not exactly a dynasty warriors game but it still feels like what's the right word like persona they put like a persona twist on it you know like yeah like if like mm-hmm. you, 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 you if you play like if you were a big fan of persona 5 and it's like oh yeah it has like the day it has like the day like cycle and stuff like that it doesn't it doesn't run exactly the same because like oh it's not like doesn't have like the daily like oh you can do whatever you want like by the day but it still has that whole thing of like oh there's a daily progression it's like you have like mm-hmm. that open world where you can like explore around a little section go to the stores and like buy stuff you have like the way the quote like th- this versions of mementos works and you can like go and like set up like get your group together plan everything buy all your equipment enter leave as you will uh the way uh the way the uh, velvet room works like all those little pieces right, right. that were that you recognize from persona 5 like oh they're all there it's like you if you replaced the actual combat scenes with the original rpg from persona 5 yeah it would basically just be yeah the the same thing and it's like oh it that would which is why again as more of a persona 5 than a than a, a warriors fan it's like oh i was really happy to see them blend it in and i thought again as even though i don't play a lot of warriors games i do i am a pretty big fan of like hack and slot like platinum uh, like hack and slashers and stuff like that so i've like so, so being able to play like being very like fast paced hack and slash with like with all of, like the persona abilities and like the magic stuff and being able to play the all like all like the characters that, that i love playing that i love that I, I just love from like that original game it's like oh this is just like this is even like fun like just you you can full-on control each of the main fan thieves and, like oh that that's just so cool yeah it's a really unique twist and um unlike the original game you're not under a time constraint to beat the level it's not like time constraint was an issue in the original one anyway but you know like you can still do your do your thing so i actually had a very like <laughs> i had a very different experience with the gameplay i i agree with what you're saying Ste- stefan and that they 
did put a lot of persona elements into the fighting my feeling was they almost went a little too hard with that at the cost of it not it, it doesn't mesh as well with the muso elements as i think it could have so for my my back my only real background in muso games is with um Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, which were also made by Technokoe. My my biggest criticism, there's two there's two major criticisms I have of the battle system. The first is that a lot of the enemies are very difficult to juggle or stun um, if you are just using your string or like your light string or normal attacks and they have super armor whenever they're casting spells which can make it feel like there's no way to avoid these things or to knock them out of their spells the exception to that is if you hit their elemental weakness this is where i feel like they they wanted the elemental weakness to be a part of it because that's so big in persona gameplay it's figuring out the enemy weaknesses but this is where i think the game sort of fell into this weird mesh of gameplay that did not work for me where to do elemental attacks you either have to use a spell for which you have limited mp that does not restore without items or like certain abilities or you have to use a certain uh combo it depends on the character but like for joker it's his c4 in like warrior's notation which means um three light attacks and then a heavy attack there's exceptions like panther can just heavy attack to give her whip uh fire for the then it's fire for the light string but what i would consider the standard like joker you know most of the characters it's their c4 that is needed to get the elemental affinity this made it feel like the c1 through c3 were pretty useless um and in other muso games from like what i've seen as well as the dq heroes the C1 is just a heavy attack, like so it's it's a, it's very limited. C2 generally like throws the enemy in the air, like for a juggle. Again, that doesn't work if an enemy is casting a spell and has super armor. C3 tends to be um, a wider area, um, but not as large as C4. So it just ended up feeling like there was no point to doing any of the earlier combos or the light string it was just like sp go to the character that can hit the elemental weakness spam spells or s the c4 or whatever else combo hits the elemental weakness until the battle's over and then sort of tagged on to that with, with my issue was that the large enemies that had like weak point gauges your nor like elemental attacks did almost nothing to the weak point gauges the best way to knock down the weak point gauge was with spells and that's not fun to me like running around the arena lining up a spell firing off a spell maybe trying to go in and do some normal damage you know repeat heal mp if when i need to it just felt very repetitive in a way that like i'm not fully sure what the solution would have been i think the enemies not having so much super armor would have helped i think having regenerating mp might have helped with not feeling like the any boss fight was just a war of attrition <laughs> yeah i don't know i i was very conflicted like I, I had a lot of trouble with the gameplay when i first started because it was it felt very different from GQ Heroes, uh, and I think eventually I kind of got the hang of it. But I just, I didn't, I still didn't. I felt like it was, it was lacking in some ways. Um, I will say on the positives, I really like, like Stefan said, I thought it was really fun 
getting to control the Phantom Thieves. It was really fun just being able to run around as the different Phantom Thieves. And I appreciate how much they tried to put in elements from P5 in the battle system. Like uh, there's real, the weapons are like updated depending on what you have equipped. So I, I really wanted to like the gameplay more than I did. <laughs> Sorry, I went on forever. No, it's fine. The, the game, it, it was really interesting, like for me, just because, yeah, like the, I would say it, it, it reminded me of my very first playthrough of Persona 5 because that first uh, palace or jail in this game gave me so much trouble. Like, I died, like, did, like, just like in P5 when I first played the first palace, I died so many times because it was my first time really going through a game like that. So I was trying to figure out what do I do? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to handle? Like, what, like, what, what, what stuff do I have? Like, what am I supposed to get? How do I progress through this? So it's like, just kind of that learning curve and then once i got to the second pal once i get the second palace i'm like okay i know how this game works and i had much easier time with this it was like yeah like the first time is like oh i i, I just kept dying and dying because i'm like oh shit I'm just i'm just getting overloaded by all the enemies and i'm just trying to figure out okay how do i like jump back and forth between like the four different characters that you have uh how do i scroll through each of the personas i have and using their abilities how do they best work and that's like, yeah, I, I died so many times. But what I think what helped was that the game had a very, it had a decent, the way it was structured made it, uh, at least for me personally, easier to figure out. So that by the time I got to that second dungeon, I was like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do. I've got the hang of this uh, combat. So I just go like jump back and forth. I, I was able to like, just go, okay, I know what this character to do. I can know what this character to do. Like they, they do throw a lot of you at once. So it does take a lot, it does take a while to figure out like what exactly each character does but it's like you at least get a gist so it's like you can use like the bear you can at least you know the bear necessities by the end of that first uh by the end of that first dungeons like the second one i'm like okay i've got like i know how all of joker's personas work i know like i've figured out like what each way what, what each character is best at for each situation so it's like okay i can switch between back and forth i figured out that oh yeah the game is like oh yeah you do you do the uh weakness attacks and then you can like swap and then it'll, like sometimes it'll be the uh uh, like the ver this game's version of the uh, I'm blanking on the name, but it's like oh you press the button and you switch over to the next character and they oh do, like, it's a the move. baton pass yeah baton pass that's right mm -hmm. yeah so it's like you do something like that so it's like the game really wants you to go like keep switching back and forth between all the characters so you're not just sticking with Joker just sticking with one other person and I'm I was glad is that the the game has stuff like like it has it has kind of like fit kind of like what you mentioned of like there are certain things that like oh you feel like the game is like limited in certain ways so you might kind of get screwed over but the game kind of like I feels like they kind of know about that so they have like their own personal like adjustments so it's like oh oh if you if you go into a battle and you don't have the right uh, oh, that, you don't that have the right me. characters that in order to really yeah. annoyed me that that was another thing that really annoyed me playing the game when you go into a mini boss or like with the bosses it was easier to guess because normally it was the character who had the most involvement in that dungeon had the weakness of the boss like in the first jail on yeah. had <laughs> um the boss's weakness but it pissed me off when you go in, like I, I have i had it multiple instances where i went into a mini boss and no one can hit the weakness and you can't so I, my options are hard cycle the console or like, well not hard cycle but like quit the game and reload the whole game or i just put the controller down and went to get a drink and let the boss beat me up until i could reset the battle and change my party i don't know why they didn't have a way for you to change your party mid battle but in a game where the weaknesses are so important it, it just was aggravating See, I, I can at least understand why they didn't want, because I feel like being a, yeah, I, I know, I know we, we like mentioned this before of like, oh, maybe they could have like a buffer of like, oh, you can switch out one person, but you can't switch out another person for like a certain amount of time or something like that. But I feel, I do feel like I can understand why they're like in a battle, you can only stick with the four people. And it's like, yeah, because, because I, I had like a couple times, like when I played even Persona 5, there'd be a time like I have had like a certain people and then I enter a battle and it's like, oh, none of my people are like good against 
against that. So I'm like, okay, I got to go and switch somebody out. And it's like, if you don't like, if you're at the, if you're at a point in the game where you haven't like gotten the ability to switch a turn without switching somebody without wasting a turn, then it's like, oh, you're going to get like, yeah. So it's like, I feel, I feel like in comparison to that, I'm like, I didn't mind how it was done. Like it went in this. And also it's like, there's the worry of, oh, you're running out of MP. Cause it's like, oh, if you don't, if you're worried that you don't want to like waste any more of your magic, like your magic, cause it's like, it's rarer than HP uh, healing, obviously. But then the game has the, 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 they do the whole thing. Like in persona five of, oh, you can, you can leave the, uh, in, except in like certain circumstances, you can leave, you can, uh, you can leave the, the jail at any point uh, in the checkpoints. But unlike in persona five, where it's like, oh, it had the day schedule. So you have to leave and then you have to wait until the next day in order to go back. But in here, it's like, you can leave and come back and still the same day. So you can keep oh, going back and forth I did that. as many times as you want. And it's like, yeah, I did that. Like, I did that uh, all the much- time. Because <laughs> I'm like, you're not wasting a day, so why just switch in and switch out? Yeah. The game expects you to. There's no way you could beat the game without it. Like, leaving and coming back into the dungeon. Not for sure, for sure. Yeah, and the game straight up said like when they first introduced the checkpoints, they're like they're like oh yeah, and don't worry about going back and going uh, in and out in order to reheal yourself. It's like oh like they straight up say it's not even it's not even like it's an export. The game's like oh yeah, go ahead and do that yeah. if you want you to. There be so many times where I spammed magic and everything and everyone's tired and i'm like oh well let's just exit and then come back again and then everyone's healed up like okay continue through (laughs) yeah it, it, it made like going through the hard like when you like when you're doing backtracking and you're doing like the harder encounters which are like you said kind of war of attrition of just overloading your like most powerful spells against them like it made those at least in some ways kind of more fun because like you can just go nuts with the most powerful weapon like the most powerful magic as much possible and once the battle's done you just go and like you leave and you're all healed up so yeah, it's like yeah. something like that. It's like I didn't mind. Like I didn't mind in that way because like oh, it, it made you feel it, in those certain moments. It made you feel so powerful, even when even when they're they're kicking your ass because those one like those like those big battles can get really hard. Mm-hmm. I found most of the time uh, the game's combat was mostly about reading reactions and dodging things effectively, and weaknesses definitely helped. But the thing was, I was always controlling Joker, and I always had a persona lineup so that I would always have a weakness of some kind. Uh, specifically, I would have personas whose base weak, whose base strength is a certain element. So, like, even though you might have, like, uh, what should we call it, Jack Frost, you know, he might be able to do other abilities, but he's always going to have ice as his base thing. So when you do Joker's combo, he's going to do perform ice on whatever he's attacking. And so I had, like, lots of elemental personas to always have a, an, app- an opportunity to do a weakness. And I found... This game is pretty challenging if you're playing on normal mode. Like, it's it's not that bad on easy, but when you're playing on normal, yeah, it doesn't take prisoners. You're going to die in the first dungeon. I guarantee it. You're going to die in the first dungeon, uh, which is surprising, because, like, I went into the the palace boss, Alice. I had Morgana. I had On. So I had Fire and Wind, which were Alice's weaknesses, and yet I was still caught off guard trying to adapt to all of the attacks that Alice was doing that I still caught a lot of damage and I still died my first time playing it. And it's like, Jesus. But, you know, it's all about just like studying how enemies move, how enemies react and watching their animations and knowing when they're about to wind up and do some kind of AOE attack when they're about to do some kind of lunge at you or something. And it is very much an action game. It's a very action oriented thing where weaknesses definitely help, but it's all about how you maneuver the characters and how you maneuver passed around the enemies that makes the fights a little bit more bearable so it it definitely has its challenge but i do think there is a little bit of skill involved that makes it not as frustrating as it could be i i get what you're saying and i i agree that like yeah that was movement feels very different in scramble than it did in dragon quest heroes like you move a lot faster it actually felt like new and even like the dog yeah i kind of felt that too mm-hmm. more so than any other muso game i am pushing the right trigger a lot which is like the, the yeah. instant dash it's it's because like it's a da- i didn't realize that was what the game considered like your dodge roll until someone told me because i'm like this doesn't feel like a dodge roll but it works because uh, they called it phantom dash yeah i i get what you're saying clement and yes like you it is especially for the bosses like reading their attacks is so like is important i just found it re- like nearly impossible when you're fighting a mob to do that when you're fighting like a mob of like you know 
five Valkyries who are all over the place and all charging up to do something. I know you mentioned this a lot. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, I know you I, you kind of delved into this when you were talking about your issues with the gameplay. Would you say it's a matter of you playing previous Musou games and trying to translate what you did beforehand into Persona 5 S? Is that what I'm... I don't, I don't think like? so, because I did, like, I did get, like, in talking to other people, I feel like I got some advice on, like, how to think about this game, and ultimately the way I played it in the end was not like how I play DQ Heroes or how I play DQ Heroes going back to it. Mm -hmm. But like, I think that was definitely part of my issue when I started playing the game was like, this isn't like, I was expecting it to be more like DQ Heroes and there's enough of it that feels like DQ Heroes that I'm confused. Um, But ultimately, like, I think the, the biggest issue for me was just how much it felt like spamming spells just made things way easier and like you know i didn't have much of a use for the light string or like attacks that didn't have an elemental affinity because they just were objectively worse than if i can hit the weakness right right yeah that and that that wasn't something that went away with like getting more accustomed to the gameplay yeah, I feel like a lot of people are going to go into this game thinking they're just going to be hacking and slashing only, and then it's going to play like Age of Calamity, like Hyrule Warriors and and Samurai Warriors and all this other stuff. But the thing is, it is still operating like a Persona RPG with weaknesses, and you do have debuffs and buffs and stuff. So like, you can raise your strength while lowering their defense in order to make the fights go by a little bit smoother. But if you're playing this like an action game and you don't think of the strategic elements to what the Persona RPGs have to offer, you know, you might forget about these extra secondary skills and then you might be a little bit longer or a little bit more challenging than you'd like it to be. But sometimes, I I guess it's because I just played Final Fantasy VII Remake before Persona 5 Strikers came out. So that game is also like action based, but very strategic and very much like you have to pause the action to heal your characters and to, you know, activate certain buffs for the characters and it, both games like freeze the action, which I appreciate. Like FF7 slows things down, and in Persona 5, whenever you're selecting like Persona skills, the action just completely stops, and that gives you time to like move the reticle of where you want to like throw a spell, and you don't have to worry about something like sneak attacking you or, or you know interrupting your thoughts or whatever. Yeah, it, it's a thinking man's Muso game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would disagree there because I I I think there were some fights where that was the case, but I I felt like it was way less thinking than, you know, a proper, like, P5 or, you know, SMT. And, like, other, like, again, like, yes, you can use buff debuff spells. Those take a lot of MP. And obviously, like we've said, if you're just exploring a dungeon, that's fine. You can basically leave whenever. If you're fighting a boss or like a mini boss, which the mini bosses are pretty beefy in this game in terms of like how much damage they take to go down. If you're fighting a boss or a mini boss, like MP is a very finite resource Uh, and similar to like the main P5. Yes, there are items you can use to restore MP. The, the amount that you can buy is, like, quite limited. Uh, eventually, like, I did manage to stock some up, but, like, it takes time. So I, I think part of the issue really is, like, that the MP doesn't recharge at all, which I get why they did that, and I'm not sure they could have balanced it with the MP recharging, because then it would just encourage even more the issue I had of this is just, easy, like, 10 times easier if I just spam spells, but like, again, the you know, I'll keep bringing up Dragon Quest Heroes because it's the only other Musou game I have experience with. That game had an MP spell casting system, your MP recharged over time. And I found that a lot more workable. It isn't in the same way that you're thinking, but they, uh, 
characters that are in like that are in like the backup like the ones that aren't in the party their hp and mp do slowly regenerate like it isn't like a lot but they're they they do slowly regenerate regenerate after every fight that you do so like there is like that is there is like some semblance of like oh because i guess because they they want you to keep swapping out everybody so you have like four people out then it's like one person's run out low on mp you switch them out for somebody else then you switch though that person out for some another person somebody else, which like which is how i played the original persona 5 i just kind of go through like my whole party until everybody's like out of mp and then like if i usually by then i'd get to the end of the end of the palace but if not if for some reason i'm not then that's when i'd go and leave and then come back so it's like i, I even though you didn't need to in strikers i did kind of like there'd be a couple times where it'd be like oh i won't leave like after every single checkpoint i'll like play like i played the like five and royal which is just go through until i've run out of everybody and usually by then i'd get pretty far into it and it's like oh it's like i, I basically seeing like oh how far can i go before needing to use that and it's like so i, I didn't abuse it as much as i thought i was going to do i just kind of like oh i use it whenever i needed to and i liked that i like there was that option there yeah i'll also admit i think there were like four times that i switched uh, the difficulty to easy because i was like fuck this i can't deal with this I think it was like <laughs> uh, what was it was yeah there there was one there was like two of like the super hard uh like optional like fights and then there, there was one encounter i think in the uh sixth jail it was like it was one of the protect futaba missions and oh. it was like in that situation it was just oh, yeah. for some reason oh, incredible because one. like mm -hmm. she, the, it was yeah. all of the enemies and where futaba was in like it's such it was in such a weird like position that it was like i just couldn't attack people and protect her at the same time and it was just overloaded me and i was like fuck it let me change to easy and then i did it on that first try and it's like it was just like it, yeah there was like there were a couple times when it was like i just said screw it and just kind of like i i took I, I took out my dignity and just to swallow swallowed the pill but it's like other than those times which are like again so partially it's partially it's a, maybe it's like mar, might might be one reason of like oh, I'm, I'm not good and i should try harder and other being like oh that, that just the game is just kind of has a weird yeah weird difficulty curve at certain points they're also like hard, there are also enemies that are like yeah like harder than they should be especially charging enemies which are just like an absolute like dick bag to deal with because it's like oh, they yeah. constantly yeah they constantly <sighs> combo you like like crazy and it's so hard to really effectively dodge or counter them yeah and that was where i think i like i i agree with what clement said about that's where like if you can figure out their pattern and like see okay whatever that is like uh eligor you know whoever is like oh he's charging up let me make sure like not attack right now let me like jump up somewhere or just focus on dodging out of his charge that that's what that's what i like about muso i will say one real praise i have for this game is i was so happy when i realized you can heal futaba when she's hacking it makes protect the a tower so much easier when you can heal the tower and it makes sense yes. like she's you know she's a human you should be able to heal her but <laughs> i've played other you know there's been missions in other games where it's like no you're protecting this person but you can't heal them oh so they're protecting like no wait this isn't for muso they're not they're not protecting like missions in other muso games right yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, it, that was actually one issue I had with dra the first Dragon Quest Heroes, where there were a lot of protect this thing, protect this person missions, oh, and you okay. could never heal the thing you were protecting. Like, in some cases, it was an inanimate mm -hmm. object, so that, like, made sense, but sometimes you were protecting a person. It's like, <laughs> let me heal right in front of you <laughs> while you stand. I figured also, like, if you're, if, if you're approaching this game as, like, an RPG, it would definitely, like, make sense. For you to heal Futaba. So to me that really didn't seem out of the ordinary, you know? Yeah. No, that's that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, although, like... I, although I, I didn't real I didn't realize you could heal Futaba until like much later in the game, so it's oh, like no. that is something. Yeah. Although, <laughs> oh, although, no. although, although although there was a what there was like they finally made a use because like, oh, you could give Futaba accessories and stuff yes. in the original P5, but that did nothing. But in this you can. It's like, oh, there actually is a reason to do that. Because like, oh, you can give her you can give her like uh uh armor because yeah. like oh it actually makes sense because the more armor you have on her the harder it is for them to kill her it's like oh yeah that actually makes sense and i was glad they found a way to work that in like give her accessories and like have it actually make sense also futaba was the only reason i was keeping like mabufu magaru type spells because like when a crowd of things are like going for her it's nice to have that big wide area of effect attack 
to kind of like knock him away from her. It also makes those missions much easier. Yeah, most of the time I, I felt like the the AOV spells like you're. I feel like the area of attack for like Clement said, with the exception of the protect Futaba missions, most of the time you didn't really need the bigger. Oh, area yeah. effect for the moss spells like the the normal yeah. one was big enough yeah yeah the normal yeah it was always like oh a circle and then a slightly bigger semicircle and i'm like it i don't need to square. worry about the slightly <laughs> it was, it was, a was, a squ- it was, was slightly bigger and i was like I, you don't you don't need that like it's just slightly further away it's and it's like more, usually and you it's more yeah, you don't need to yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's more yeah so it's like yeah Oh, and, there, and that is another. That is related to another thing that I was really glad that they did in this game is that in the original game, like every time, like when when the characters, uh, like when they when they overloaded on their slots, you had to like you had to do like the Pokemon thing of like replacing replacing a move with another move, and they had to forget it. But if you wanted to, the, and if you wanted them to learn it, you had to like waste a day slot having them go to church and remembering it. <laughs> But like, but in this game, all of your moves are in kind of like a, a status thing. That so it's like you so, can. That was such a smart thing. I'm really glad they did that. Yeah. So yeah. So it's like, if, if you're going, so if you're going into a battle, yeah. So it's like kind of the thing of like, oh, if you're going into a battle or you died in a battle, and you're like, okay, let me go back in and like look at my per- like a character's move set and switch out a move. Like, oh, if they have like if they have a healing, if you don't have a healer out, you can oh, let me quickly switch out this move so that they have a healing move in. So it's like there, I've got a he- I've technically got a healer in this fight, and then you can switch it out. Uh, like once you're done it's like yeah, it allows like very good like customization of like all of the characters depending on like what the fight and the situation that you desire for them unrelated but I, because i looked up so little about the game i didn't realize that futaba wasn't directly controllable and i did get sad when i realized i wasn't going to be able to noom around as necronomicon yeah, I, I had a feel. Yeah, because again, I didn't look up anything either, and I had a feeling that Futaba was gonna be playable. Just expecting, like, from, just from, from what I've heard, is like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna assume, considering like Futaba is still gonna be in her same role. And now I was like, god damn, it's like I want to be able to play, I want to be able to play as her running around, like, yeah, you go in her little UFO. I know. I was just gonna bring that up. Like, you could, pl- you could fly your UFO around. That would just be oh so my much. God. Fun. <laughs> I was, I was gonna, I was so excited, mm. and then no. Yeah. I- it be it's like in Persona 4 Arena, you can play as Rise even though she's supposed to be a support character. Like, she uses her persona to fight, you know? So it's like, if Rise can fight in Arena, why can't uh, Futaba fight in, in Strikers? But, you know. <laughs> instead, instead we get street clothes and kitchen running around! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I so hard. Oh I was like... What is this fool doing? He's he's hiding and then just jogs across with the dumbass jog. Oh my god. You, you do get good you do get good things like being when you play as Morgana. Like well for first of Morgana when when he's running, he 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 has his little like sonic, he has his little like kinda like the sonic circles yes. and he jumps around in like cartoon noises, which is already great, and then he can transform into the car and drive around as the car for as long as you want, and it's like that's so great. Cat plus runs over people, fuck yeah. Mor- Morgana was absolutely my favorite to control in the overworld, like, or, or in the jails because of the ridiculous sound effects and, like, even his normal, like, not his dash, but, like, his normal run, he's like, doo 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 with the little feet. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think he has a smaller jump height because I remember trying to make jumps onto some ledges and I couldn't make them as Morgana. Possible. I haven't, I have, like, I didn't notice any, like, big differences between the characters because it feels, it felt like that was one, it's like, this is one of the games where it's like, oh, even though characters are all have different sizes, they all have, like, when it comes to platforming, they all have basically, they're all, like, kind of, like, the same, like, design wise. It, it might be possible that, yeah, like, Morgana has a shorter jump just because of how smaller he is, but, like, I didn't notice, I didn't strictly notice because usually, because whenever, like, you're jumping, like, on platforming stuff, they have, like, the, like, the, the circle button thing where you're, like, oh, you're jumping from, like, thing to thing, so it does like everybody has like the same kind of range so it didn't feel as exact in those instances yeah yeah in terms of characters to play as i think it was like yeah because it was like everybody had like their own like because everybody has their own kind of style so that the, the i think the the one the one that i found the most fun was uh 
Makoto just because like yeah she has she has like her her Johanna which is like kind of similar to Morgana she rides on it and you can either do it like for like a big like a big splat a big like nuclear splash attack that attacks a whole bunch of people in front of you or you can have her do like little like skids around she's like one of the faster characters so like that was one of like to being like running around like being really quicky quick and nimble like going back and forth punching uh, I loved uh, On's ma- especially On's machine gun yeah. is like Rex yes. Rex shit. So uh, at at first uh, it was hard for me to play with Sophia just because it's like oh yeah, because it, her 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 play style is a lot more of like timing focused so it was like you can't just simply spam the attacks you have to actually like pit them at certain points but once I got the hang of that she was one of my favorites to play as too because it was like oh like you can like juggle juggle enemies a lot more uh, eas- easily and I liked like the way like her move like her like special moved work too. Yeah, Sophia was actually my favorite to play. Like, um, I kind of got how to play her from the get-go and like just comboing with her and timing everything just made play- the gameplay so satisfying for me. So she was consistently in my party and th- we'll get into this later, but there's this one moment in the game where she isn't in your party. And I'm like, no, I need you. I need you, yo-yo, <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> An was my favorite character. I just love her range. I love how her whip just goes around everything. And especially if you're trying to fight something that has elemental weakness to fire, being able to just toggle triangle and then she just turns her whip into fire and then everything she does is a fire attack. It's like, ah, oh. she, w- she was who I had the most fun with. I'm surprised. I, I feel like it would have been, I would have almost preferred if all the characters had that ability to like switch to elemental attacks, given how strongly yeah, yeah. the game mm-hmm. relies on like, Element and mental weaknesses. Um, I liked I liked on. I really like Joker as well, but I think they clearly designed him to be a very accessible and useful character because he's kind of your default. I also liked Makoto. I didn't like Haru. I'm not as big a fan of like the slow axe wielders, and I didn't. I, I also didn't like the the characters with this sort of Sophia's playstyle in Deku Heroes, so part of it was I was like, I already know I don't like this playstyle, so I didn't I didn't try too hard to like Sophia. Um, but yeah, the the perfect catch thing I find really hard to like feel the rhythm for in the same way I can feel the rhythm for normal dynasty warriors combos and like visually it's really hard to see the queue with that much going on on screen but it's cool that you you guys got use out of sophia because for me she was uh mostly the heel bitch (laughs) taking that role from morgana because i actually liked playing as morgana (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, Zenkichi and Yusuke were the ones that were kind of the hardest for me to figure out, just because Yusuke has his whole like you have to like press the like, you have to press like his sword like his sword swings in a certain timing, and you can do like the you can do like like that if you press it in a certain timing, he does that like sword move where like he close where he do like he closes and unsheathes his uh, sword and like everything slows down a bit, and then it's like there's a big slash. And it's like I just could not figure out like how that timing works. I just kind of it would just keep happening at per certain points. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, uh, and then with Zenkichi has his whole like his like his like rage his like his like rage power where it's like oh you press like triangle or something and he's like oh he's a lot stronger but he loses hp i just could not get the hand like get the handle was, of like oh how it yeah. works so it was like i just ended up not using it most of the time i agree yeah. i liked zenkichi's idea in theory um there's a character with a similar mechanic in dragon quest heroes where he has a broadsword and he can activate an ability and like move faster but in his case it's not that he's he drains hp it's that it's just a big mp cost to activate it um but i felt like yeah it was it was really hard to keep zenkichi's health up because when he's in fury mode he drains he like uh, he absorbs hp from the enemies so i think the idea is that you you keep attacking and you essentially like get enough health to keep pace with what you're losing but it was really you know it's it's very situational like if you're fighting a big enemy it's going to be hard it would be hard to get in enough damage to keep his health up um he was great though as far as like and the other problem with zenkichi is he can't hit elemental weaknesses but i did really like him for the fact that he eventually gets uh heat riser and debilitate 
which like heat riser was one i i said earlier that like eh, a lot of the time i didn't feel like uh the buff debuffs were quite worth the mp cost but heat riser and debilitate were definitely exceptions once i unlocked those heat riser was like i the final boss i basically just had Zenkichi constantly putting Heat Riser on Joker, and then I would go to town with Joker. Yeah, and it's similar to what you said about like with with the way the health work, because that was that was something I didn't figure out until like halfway through the game. Was that oh, you also have along, along with the the MP the attacks that cost MP. There's also the attacks that cost HP, and I was like, why would I use those attacks that cost HP? It's like that feels like a waste. But then I realized, oh, when you use it, your HP slowly heal. Like if you don't get hit, your HP slowly heals up after using it. So I was like, okay, so there is somewhat of a like there isn't like as much of a reason still to use this the the, uh, the special items or your like regular physical attacks but it did make me be like okay i'll use those occasionally in certain moments because i know i can like oh get that hp back they were great i love them for like if you had a, it was those big physical attacks were great if you had like an enemy frozen or under some other status effect where like a physical hit would do a lot of damage it was good to have like a nice big single hit from like yusuke or joker or whoever but yeah it was it was definitely a risk because you you could gain the health back or you could lose it if you get hit. <laughs> so. Yeah, and there was a and there was a point where I think like especially by like over halfway through the game, you get especially if you're if you're constantly buying stuff, you have like so much HP and like healing anyway that it's like oh, you you shouldn't have to worry about like getting your health back anyway. So it's like you, that, that that is that is safe. You, you know you, how much I took advantage of all the cooking in that oh game? Because, oh my god, every town I would go to, I would buy all the food, and it would all sell out, and I'd just cook and cook and cook and cook, and it helped so much with, like, HP and magic. Also, the, so, yeah. the other really nice thing about the food items was that a lot of them then give you, like, buffs debuffs. Or, not debuffs, yeah. <laughs> they give you buffs. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, that, that was super... There were definitely points where I was just, like, using that to keep keep up like Matara Kaja or Masuka Kaja. Um, right. Yeah. No, and the cook can we talk about how adorable the cooking is? Yes! <laughs> this little male wife in his apron. <laughs> what should we make? <laughs> what are we cooking? <laughs> and everyone, all the all the PT like just being like, ooh, what are you cooking, Joker? <laughs> like <laughs> so, yeah, honestly I I, I I would always cook. I would always cook. I would immediately once I got a new recipe, I'd cook just so I could hear whatever the dialogue was after you made yeah, it. Yeah, and there'd be new dialogue for like all the recipes and stuff. This so so it's, it was just nice to see like engagement from the party. That was the biggest like that that like sort of an overall thing. Seeing more engagement and interaction between the characters was absolutely a highlight of this game for me. Like. Not even related to the story, but just seeing these goofballs, like, running around Japan, doing weird stuff. Yeah. I think I think I think I think, I think that, that 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 that's really good to jump get yeah, now jump in yeah because we we talk about most of like gameplay stuff like I think now it's good to jump into the story and then we can jump into whatever gameplay stuff we think of going through. Cause yeah, cause there is, yeah, that, that is some, that is what I, I definitely agree with, with that is that if, if there is like the one, the, the, the straight up shining, uh, the shining beacon of this game is the chemistry of the cast. It's like the, this whole, like, I get, I, I don't know how much, it's hard to tell exactly between like how much of this is directly from the Japanese text, how much of this is like uh, liberties on the translators and writers and like the way, what like in the voice actors and stuff like that. But I feel like at least just based on my experience, these eight plus two English, like the, these act like these characters and their vocal performances have like the perfect chemistry and just yeah just here just the the kind of the the moments in the story which are just kind of filler and just like no they don't they don't progress anything it's just the characters chatting about what like most of the time it's chatting about food it's chatting about it's chatting about it's chatting about silly things too and i think what really helps is that like the vas themselves if you follow any of them on social media are super connected with their characters like i see erica harlicker like um cosplay is on like all the time i see rob um other voice actors like you know just really connect with fans and all the memes and the community so i think that plays a ton into um that engagement with 
um, the voice cast. Yeah. Max Middleman, Erica Harlicher, uh, Cassandra, uh, Cassandra, Cassandra Morris, uh, Jeremy Lee, uh, uh, Zanith, uh, I, I can't pronounce her name, but Zan- Zanith Hume. Uh, Hume, yes, yes, uh, Erica Lindbeck, uh, uh, Matthew Mercer, and technically Xander Mobis, whenever he, whenever he has his little, whenever he has his little grunts and stuff, but it's like, all of them, <laughs> it's like, they, they deserve, like, the top mark. I mean, they, they, they alone say, they saved Persona 5 the animation <laughs> Somewhat. Oh, for sure. I, I'm just to say, I'm so glad they didn't drip feed the characters in this game. I'm glad that like, you have the whole party for the majority of the game. It, it was a bad thing, I think, in terms of like pacing for the gameplay, because like it's it's a lot to throw eight characters at the player. Like, well, you know, like, yeah, you get Joker first and then like eight other characters and then Wolf halfway through the game. So gameplay wise, I think it was a questionable move. But in terms of like, it, you know, if if you had to play half the game before you got to see these interactions, like it would have been a waste. Yeah, and and they they did do at least like a smart thing of having that beginning tutorial section of the first jail be just Joker, Ryuji, Morgana, and then Sophia. It's like oh, they did like you have this section with just four of the characters, you can't switch. and then you get the other. Uh, you can't switch. I thought. Yeah, like at least at least you had like or at least they were like in the party, so you got a, you got the idea of like oh how they played, like you got the idea of like how they played, and like you got to see them like in action, and then once you got the then then you get the other five come in, so it's like but yeah, but yeah, it, it made yeah for both story and structure, it's like yeah may, maybe it would have been better like, gameplay wise to have them drip feed, but overall in terms of story and presentation and structure, yeah, it was much better that you got them all. Yeah, like. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, as an additional thing with the voice cast, like, um, I really connected with the characters in the original Persona 5, and just as from a Persona fan viewpoint, seeing everyone interact and have fun with each other again is great, because I miss them, yes. you know? <laughs> I love the premise of the story. I love that they're on a cross-country trip mm-hmm. throughout Japan. It's so cute. Yeah, what, what I yeah what I love about the story the story feel it feels like it's not just oh here's another game starring the Phantom Thieves and stuff like like this actually feels like a sequel to Persona Five that it's like oh like that the the events of that previous game directly lead into the events of this game it's like the whole like the, the it starts off with 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 the with Zenkichi and the police force being all like oh there are a bunch of uh, weird change of heart things that are going around the country and hey we remember we we arre- remember we arrested the leader of the fan- Phantom Thieves, so we know they exist, so we suspect that they're involved, and so it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, you, you they aren't forgetting that, oh, yeah, these guys know that the Phantom Thieves are real, so, like, that plays into it, and then you get the whole thing of, yeah, they're, everybody meeting together for summer vacation, so it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're all, like, they're all, like, getting back together, so it's like, oh, we're gonna go on a trip, but then they end up stumbling, they end up discovering that, uh, they're, the, this new app that's around called Emma, it has a back, <laughs> has a back door to the the metaverse which has been be, just being used to steal the steal people's desires and make them basically obsessed with whoever is in charge of the jail which is this game's version of the palace so it's like they're now they're thrown into this they meet a they meet a a, a weird ai in the world called sophia who is humanity's companion and i love her who's a precious she is adorable <laughs> And they, and then, then you have all that. Then you have you have them, them meeting Zenkichi, who is basically like, who is basically like, hey, hey, he's basically, hey, I am not suspicious at all. And them remem- remembering, remembering the the two last, the, the the other times that they trusted people who turned out to be scumbags. They're like, yeah, no, well, we don't like you. It's also straight up said he's from PubSec, which is public security, yes. which yeah. is the Japanese FBI, which is the people. Who the three like the three cops who beat up Joker after like on interrogation day? They were from PubSec, so like I mean, <laughs> like, I think they were justified in not wanting anything to do with him. You'll have to forgive us. We just don't trust the police. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my Makoto's then my picture of Makoto being like, but but I want. Did I fucking stutter? <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't trust the fucking police makoto haru says a cab <laughs> <laughs> i loved so much about zenkichi like i loved how he would go from like 
suave, like, like cop who's willing to do things like not quite by the book to like the the PT just dunking on him <laughs> the whole time. Like Gramps. just the, the pendulum yes. between like I'm this cool cop and I'm wearing a suit and I got everything under control and I'm making suspicious phone calls to my boss and then like this guy just getting dunked on by a bunch of teenagers. I'm like, this is just a bunch of Zoomers bullying a boomer, and I am here for it. Yeah, Zoomers, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> his, his first scene with them is like he beats up like a, he beats up an, uh, a a harasser, and then his friend runs away, and then he's just like, no, wait a minute, what about your friend? Oh, <laughs> it's just that, just, just that, just that one little like that, that that one little snide like funny moment. It's like okay, okay, I, th- I think I think this guy's fun. Like the other, he he also has like a real like the, the his performance and like his delivery. It's like he very much sells like just ma- yes. that makes him like much more yeah of an of an enjoyable of an en- enjoyable dork. Yes, because yeah, because again, like because like the first time you see him and you're just kind of like I don't trust I don't trust this scumbag. <laughs> It's like yeah, he, well, yeah, yeah, he's work, he's work, he's working for the yeah, he because not, I mean yeah, again, he's work, he's working for PubSec, and then he's he he also just has that face. It's like he 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 feels he it's like they kind of like took like ideas from both Akechi and Maruki and kind of like put it into a blender, and it's just kind of like like from the front face, so you're like you you don't know what to expect, and then you realize oh he he's he he's just he's just kind of an idiot in a lot of ways. Yeah. So it's like you just love seeing yeah you love seeing the group just kind of poking like poking fun he's at a him. Dork, but yeah, he's yeah, just looking very just looking good. at him at first, I was so scared that he that like he was gonna betray the party because I have that feel feeling you know. But then eventually, I'm just kind of glad that he warmed up to everyone. I'm like okay, good because I like his character. I don't want him to betray the fan of these. Well, <laughs> not again. <laughs> that <laughs> happens. That would break my heart. Like he tells Makoto straight up, like don't be a cop, <laughs> or like you know he basically is like you're very naive. Like you all are very naive. So that was what I like. He had depth. Um, as far as, like, his motivations and, like, he grew over the course of the game. That said, my biggest issues with Zenkichi as a character, first off, the whole thing with, like, his wife being dead and him being estranged from his daughter, that's just Dojima again. This is Dojima's social link again, where Dojima's wife was killed in a car accident, and part of the reason... Dojima was estranged from his daughter, although not quite to the same extent as with Zenkichi's daughter, is because he's distracted by his work and trying to figure out who killed his, like, kind of figure out, find the person who killed his wife and bring them to justice. Um, and then my other big issue was that it ends with, like, Zenkichi still part of PubSec, and it kind of feels like, did he not, like, it, it's never addressed of like did he not realize like the you know he the whole thing with his awakening was like he's wolf because he's done being a dog of like a dog that just does whatever it's told um you know he re- like he breaks away from the police to help the phantom thieves and then he just goes back to that and i'm like this game doesn't i mean it clear the game clearly doesn't know what it wants to this is a problem in p5 as well with Makoto's confidant, where it's like the game is like, fuck the cops, sorta. <laughs> it doesn't quite hit the mark with what it's trying to say. I really like for me, Zenkichi's arc just would have been so much better if they did like what they did with Sai at the end of P five. Uh, at least where yeah, I don't I don't know if this was the same thing in Vanilla, where she's like, yeah, I'm leaving the prosecutor's office to become a defense attorney, because fuck that shit. Like, I I was really hoping that Zenkichi would do that, because that would have felt like the logical conclusion of his character arc is leaving PubSec, whether it's to work something else, or whether he decides, like, he needs to focus on being there for his daughter. But it just was like, it just felt like he got what he wanted, in terms of like conclusion to his personal trauma and then just going back to things as they are with his daughter being a YouTuber. <laughs> well, to be fair, I think the reasoning was because I mean, his whole thing was that he wanted to put uh, 
what's his, he wants to want to put a what's his fa- the the uh, dick politician behind yeah. bars. So it's like if if he were yeah if he was to leave if he was to leave the police, then it's like either they would do it or they, it's, it's like either he would get away with it or they would do it. And he's like, oh, I want to be the one to put it away. So I can kind of see it of being the thing of like, oh, I'm sticking with them because I want to see this guy like like be put to justice. And it at least seemed like the intention, like the game was trying to go, because it's like his, his like his superior, like the woman superior that he's working with. It's like this whole thing of like, oh, they're both trying, like the, the, the idea is that they both want to like retake control of uh, their department because they're like, yeah, we, they're, they're, it's, it, it, yeah, it's a, it, again, it's a weird kind of situation of like they're kind of recognizing that they're, they're like the, there are the scummy things of like, oh yeah, the, the, the politician. Uh, was like doing his strings and like the all the corrupt people were like doing stuff to kind of force them down to not go down that path but it's like oh we we want to like bring we want to bring stuff back to like to what we're supposed to be so it's like again it's like this weird thing of like i, I think the game it's trying to be like like yeah like, like fuck, yeah it's trying to be like yeah fuck, fuck the cops and like fuck how like what they're doing and all of, like the stupid shit that they do but it's also it's also trying to be like but there are people trying to in some way do better within the system and whether that works or not it's like yeah it leaves it leaves it in that very big yeah. like asterisk of this does is, it work it's like a, i don't know it's, but it's a like, very gray area this is a common issue with persona 5 as a narrative where again we see the same thing with like i, I mean i get my head hurts every time i try to understand what was going on with yalda so i might be getting things wrong but like the game depicts like for example the rise of shido as like oh it was this like anomaly um that was you know because of yaldabaoth's interference and but then they just kind of go back to normal and it's like but you didn't you didn't actually go any like you did not do anything progressive you're just having a return to normalcy that almost is denying the fact that Japan is like a very conservative country and has issues with like, you know, being very nationalistic. So it it feels like the game is pulling its punches in terms of what so much of the game is trying to say in terms of like, we're the Phantom Thieves, we're, you know, fighting against an unjust society and doing things like, you know, like the Phantom Thieves do more than the cops. Yeah, it's it, so it's just more. It feels like this was more of that narrative fumbling, that kind of soured parts of P five for me. My my, my like the the reading that I had with uh, Persona Five slash Royal was that I felt like the the real villain of the game was supposed to be the the ignorance of the general public. Like the, the idea that yeah, yeah like mm-hmm. the idea is that the reason why these corrupt politicians and like evil people are able to amass so much power is because so much of the general populace and like people are just apathetic and just either will believe whatever they hear from powerful people or just do not care to like just like, it's basically, yeah, basically that whole fuck you got mine. So it's like in the the very end, like Yaldabaoth's whole thing, like by the end is that he's able to take control of the people of Japan because they don't care. And it's like, oh, and it's like, it's kind of, at least to me, like my reading was kind of symbolizing the fact that this is all their fault for basically, yeah, for being ignorant and being stupid. And I feel like it's kind of like in a, in a similar way with Str- with how it is in Strikers of like, oh, it, it's the people, it's the people, they're like the people, but especially because they play into like the people being straight up like manipulated and being taken advantage of using the power of the jails and the hearts so that's why again I think it's very much a sense of like like again like even yeah, that that evil the the like the politician guy where that that killed uh, Zenkichi's uh, wife where it's like oh he's able to get away with it because he's got the people in his pocket doing the thing and like the corrupt police and stuff like that so it's like it very much plays into the the ignorant people making things worse for making things better for the bad people and worse for the good people and it's a thing of like without and and especially nowadays because i feel like in my personal opinion nowadays it is the apathetic populace that is the reason why like even more so than the truly bad people in the world i think it's the apath the apathetic general populace that is what causes most of the issues in the world so it's like at least from my like thinking about that and then playing five and strikers like that that, that that's always been my 
personal takeaway and of that's, like that's a good what point. the yeah, yeah what, the, what they're trying to say point right because right. the sin of Yalabas like dungeon is sloth but at the same time then what does the game like say about what has changed like there's that one thing where everyone sort of wakes up and gives Joker their spirit energy to summon Satanael but like other than that there's no real implication that anything has changed and like similarly I feel like it was even worse with Scramble where it was like okay so Demiurge which just looked like a beta design of Yaldabaoth that was so lazy come on um Demiurge (laughs) was like beep boop I'm here because people didn't want to think for themselves they wanted an app to figure out what made them happy and the PT were like no they don't but that doesn't actually like that doesn't address the issue <laughs> either. How lazy. many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old yeah. man? <laughs> I, so I, I got the game. The game. The again. The dubber. The 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 studio dubbers get major major props for giving for having Emma be voiced by the voice of Siri. Really? Like the wait? Yeah, what? That, that is that is the <gasps> voice of Siri. Oh my playing, gosh. <laughs> Playing basically evil Siri, oh and it's like just the yeah, the <laughs> fact of hearing that voice do all of those evil monologues and just talking throughout the game. It's like it, it, it that 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 is such a gen like a genius idea on wow. their part. I and I'm glad they went for the it. part where Kanoe was like screaming at Emma, and she was just like, "I'm sorry, I didn't understand." That. <laughs> like she just kept repeating stuff like a robot. Uh, and you mentioned because I was about because honestly up until the sixth jail I was honestly debating by myself whether I liked the story more than the original than 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 Persona 5 slash Royal because I was like oh like I, I love like a lot of the stuff that they that is in 5 and Royal but it's the fact that there is so much a lot of it is like set up and introducing the characters and there's like all this fluff that it's like some of it sticks some of it doesn't but within Strikers a lot of that fluff is like trimmed off and it's like it's much more straightforward they do a lot more interesting things with the world building and the antagonist that's faced off so i was like oh i'm actually thinking that i was actually thinking this could potentially i could like the story more than the original but then you get to that climax and it is just a repeat of the original and i was like that's uh, okay it was like you yeah. know. i completely disagree i found the pacing of scramble was so rushed it was a combination of it was rushed it felt rushed to me like you didn't have there were a lot of times where it was just like cutscene, 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 and then you would finally get into a jail, and there was no sort of breathing room of like the daily life shit that you had in P5 of like you would go like, and P5 had this issue too of like let's go to Hawaii and have cutscenes for four days with no gameplay, um, but at least like you know you could make some progress in. A dungeon and then have a couple days of like doing laundry or whatever um yeah hey yeah we hang out or doing the social yeah, yeah. yeah because the, yeah. The, 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 they, they they do kind of have like a a replacement of the social links of like oh you can do like little like uh you do do you do little like uh, side missions with the characters and it's like oh, it's kind of like their way of implementing social links when there isn't any mm-hmm. so it's like oh they, they found a way to kind of implement like that in some way like just in a, in a little way because yeah it makes sense why like there isn't social links because like that would be hard to implement here. but yeah so I felt like I also felt like they tried too hard to make the villains sympathetic and in a way that was just that just felt very exposition heavy of like Look at their tragic past. Look, the uh, people were mean to them. And I was like, this is just, A, it's too rushed, and B, it's too, like, constant. Like, that every villain's gonna have some tragic past. Like, whereas I, I feel like, there A, there wasn't time to develop it enough, and B, it gets a little old when it's every single one. See, I, I actually, I, I appreciated the fact that, yeah, because, again, because in Persona 5, pretty much, other than, like, the main two, other than, like, yeah, Sai, Futaba, and then technically Maruki, all of the other characters are just pretty much one-dimensionally evil. 
and it's like they're with I mean like you have like there's like the, the there's kind of like the fun one dimensional evils like Kamoshida and Shido but then you had to have like Madarama is just kind of in the middle and then Kaneshiro is just kind of a very boring like just like we have one dimensional threat but it's like I what yeah. I, I at least I at like least with the you first forgot with, 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 Okumura because he was even oh, more oh, Okumura was going to say Okumura was like the absolute worst how could you forget him <laughs> Uh, how could I forget him? How yeah. could you forget that? <laughs> yeah, but I like what I liked. Yeah, about Al, about about Alice, about uh, Natsume, about Mariko. Is that yeah? Like they have like they're they're they aren't like specifically bad people. It's like e- even even in regards to their kind of phantom, like in the the metaverse crimes, it's like they aren't really completely at fault. Like, like all they know is that if somebody friends me on Emma, they'll become obsessed with me. So it's like they they aren't they aren't specifically attempt like trying to steal their desires. It's just this weird thing that suddenly happens to them. So they're like, okay, I'm gonna take advantage of it. And it's like, yeah, you see, like, yeah, Alice was Alice was a bullied while in high school. So she's like vindictive and annoyed. Like like she doesn't want to be uh, forgotten. You have Natsumi, who's just like a wannabe writer who's gonna get shit on by his by his publishers. So he's like, I just he just wants he just wants res- he wants respect in some way. And then Mariko, who is like the 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 politician who's like there are so many corrupt people around me it's like the only way for the only way for me to get anything done is i guess i have to be corrupt too so it's like it's like it's the, right. this it, it, it's very much the, this kind of thing of like oh and, and and just the nature of the the way the jails are set up it makes me instead of instead of the original palaces where I'd be like you find out the person has a palace you're like okay how evil is this person instead you're like okay so like why are they like instead in this game it's like okay why are they like this like how did they become with this way and at least for me I think I think that's like far more interesting than uh, yeah than just the one dimensionally evil oh I'm I'm an asshole. And it also ties into Sophia's character a little bit, too, because there's a point where Sophia literally asks the group, so, like, we're going to kill them, right? We're going to murder this person, right? Why not? It would make the world a better place to just get get rid of them. And they're like, we don't kill people. And I think you give them sympathetic backstories to show that every human has a story. Every human is shaped by the way the world uh, molds them, you know? Um... And yeah, you can have characters like Kamashita in the original one who they serve an important po- part of the story. It definitely has a lot to say about how teachers abuse their students and stuff, but it never asks the question of how he got into that position. How how did Kamashita become okay with this? You know? And I like the idea of Haru, you know, she had like this motherly figure who was watching over her and, and caring for her. And Haru has so many great memories of her, and she's like this great politician and she likes her a lot. And then we find out that she's actually corrupt and she's actually a bad person behind the scenes even though there is a human side to her that we we sympathize with and we 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 take for granted that like you know good people wouldn't act like this but they clearly do and then there's a human dynamic to it that sophie is picking up and learning what it means to be human that i thought it, it yeah i agree i agree with stefan i like that the, the villains were a little bit more sympathetic, or at least had yeah. motivations behind why they were doing the things they were doing. They had, yeah, they had like actual like redemptions in a way. Like, wait, wait, I, I know a part. I think part of like the in story reason was like the reason why the care, like the the people who who got their hearts stolen in P five that turned into just crying blubbering messes was because Yaldabaoth was like inf- was like influencing them to like just become like apathetic, like just just basically just basically slobs that just want to die. And like are just like overcome with grief, but like in this, it's like oh, they get their hearts changed. They're like, I'm genuinely sorry. I apologize. They, they all go to the exact same uh, press conference the apology room. room. You have to read it's a YouTuber. Room. It's a YouTuber apology. <laughs> <laughs> I take full accountability. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you as well. Like I like the fact that they actually take accountability. Yeah. That they actually would legit change. You know. Okay. And like you even have stuff, yeah. You have like like not like a not uh not Sume's like I'll never write again, and Yusuke's like no, at least you want to write, at least tr- like just try and come like if you genuinely like to write, at mm-hmm. least try and come back when you're ready. And then with Mariko, and Mariko, she's like, oh, I'm stepping down, and the mother of the dead child is like, no, you're like I I believe in you, like don't don't just run away, actually like fight for what you believe in. So it's like this thing of like oh you don't just they it's not just people like just running away from the things like they're actually like, they're they're taking responsibility and still going for like what they genuinely believe in so it's like there there is that sense of positive change i think right. for me like i i i did find the interactions between the phantom thieves like on yusuke and haru respectively 
like the, between the Phantom Thieves and the leaders, I agree that was really interesting. And honestly, I felt like that was more like development for the PT for me than it was for the rulers. Like seeing Yusuke talk about like the like acknowledge the struggles that even he goes through as an artist. Seeing Haru come to terms with like you know the fact that she like. I mean, when the person was like, oh, I'm so sorry about your father. Like, he was such a good man. I was thinking, no, he wasn't. (laughs) But, yeah, like, seeing Haru come to terms with yet another person she cares about being a terrible person. I think, again, this is kind of what, like, for me, it just felt really rushed. The, like, sympathetic backstory. Like, and maybe it's also the fact that, like, those characters we don't see them in it it's just like a conversation between other people and i just didn't find it effective and there's an elephant in the room for me with this which was kanoe which tony stark no for me it's like and i'm actually serious about this because this really did upset me that they put this in the game they literally put a father beating a child in the game with like no real warning and it was about as explicit as i think they could have got away with in a video game especially considering japan it can be a bit strict about that kind of thing uh like violence against children i was kind of horrified that they put that in the game because i feel like that would be like, I mean, it was upsetting to me, and I don't have, like, a history of abuse, uh, like, as a child. I cannot imagine how that would feel to someone who has a history of being abused as a child. To see that in the game, presented with, like, very suddenly, and then sort of just dropped with, like, a little bit of like, oh, how terrible. And then Zenkichi being like, well, this doesn't excuse what he did. And it's just kind of dropped. I just found that really insensitive. And I think it was made worse by the fact that like the pacing of this game is so much faster than P5. Like P5 didn't shy away from dark content either. Like within the first week of in-game, Shiho jumps off a building. But that felt like it was handled with a degree of like gravitas that I didn't feel in what they showed with Kanoe's backstory. And that I think was part of what made it upsetting to me. And like I'm I was honestly surprised that I didn't hear more people kind of bring it up because it just seems so insensitive. For me, I would say, because yeah, I've mentioned this to you before, which is that I will agree with, like, yeah, like the execution and, like, the way it's paced. It does feel like there sh- it should have been, there should have been a lot more time dedicated for how heavy it is. There should have been a lot more time dedicated to, like, that that situation and, like, cir- like circumvent, like, like, cir- like, going to understand, like, oh, like, how, like, be- being able to, like, be able to soak it in within, like, the correct amount of time. But I will say that I don't think, like, the actual idea and, like, what happens in in his backstory is inherently uh, a bad idea, especially because again, I use this, uh, ex- I use this, uh, 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 exp- I use this uh, example to you. Uh, in My Hero Academia, has a character has uh, one of the villain characters who has pretty much this uh, nearly the exact same backstory that he's like that he's like abused by his he's abused by his father, and you do see the abuse happen, and it's like this abuse leads him to realize that oh, there are no true heroes in this world. Nobody's gonna help me, so ends up leading to him taking matters into his own hands. So there is there is this thing of like oh I've seen this story before like used for villains especially yeah in Japanese media so it wasn't like a it was a shock to me like to see it here but it wasn't like a shock of like in like an overly insensitive one uh, 
uh, I would say, because I think I think it was just a like they they wanted yeah they wanted something like to give a reason they yeah they wanted a reason of why like why would this guy go this far like for like to give to giving a reason for like yeah why he would go this far and it's like they they may they might yeah they they might have gone a bit too much into one direction one direction of making it hey making him so uh not 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 so much sympathetic but more so empathetic that it, it's it was like more oh, maybe explicit it, that it yeah. needed to be for the amount of time that was going to be devoted to it like i i get what you're saying in terms of i think this is a story that media can and in some ways should address but for a topic as heavy as this it, it needs to be handled better and like even for me if they didn't show like pretty much physically the abuse it would have felt less uncomfortable like if it was just verbal it would have been like you know still not good that this was happening to a kid but like i really didn't need to see someone clearly kicking out a child on the floor like that felt like a lot for how short that scene and any sort of processing of that scene was. Uh, honestly, the biggest thing about that scene isn't really like the isn't really like the hard explicit content. It's more so just because you it, it kind of had that 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 uh, that. Uh, uh, God, what's it? It just, just the whole of like, oh, like at the same time, uh, like he, he, he just so happened to be like, oh, I kill, I'm gonna kill you just like I killed your mom, and it's like, oh, you killed my mom, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, oh, and it, so... he just so happens, he just so happens to hear the Zephyr Man thing, and then that's when he goes and yeah, uh, kills that him. It's me. like I feel like yeah, it's like, like yeah, that, yeah, I feel like that that stuff was like that. I feel like it's more of like that, like the fact that all that the all that information was kind of squished in that one scene was kind of the more like head scratching to me then the whole then the whole abusive parent hey real real question how did an eight-year-old kill someone and make it look like a burglary gone wrong very carefully <laughs> i don't know maybe he's maybe he's maybe he's smart i don't i don't know. there are no plot holes in persona 5 writing he, interrogation he, he, room makes total sense <laughs> he he is he is Tony Stark. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> He's Tony Stark. I do I don't who who oh in Atlas God. was like yeah let, let's let's make our let's make our technical main villain Tony Stark. It's like but but Stefan but Stefan the kids like Marvel right got to appeal to what's what's cool now. Well, maybe, like well, 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 he, he, well, there is the well, there is the part where he's like talking with where he where he when he's he's talking with Emma like in the same way uh, Stark does with Jarvis. So it's like it just made it even more like obvious and funny, especially when Emma was like kind of like sassing back to him in some ways. Yes. He's like, "Come on, do this," and he's like, "She's like, I don't know what you want. Please <laughs> ask again later." And then just, just I'm just imagining Jarvis. I'm just imagining Jarvis saying that to Tony Stark. <laughs> Please try again later. No, yeah, it was like like in the whole scene when uh, when 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 uh, Zenkichi writes his writes his uh, calling card, and it's just a police it's just a police report, and he's reading it. And he's just like, "What the hell's this?" That was the best. <laughs> I love Zenkichi's dorky calling card, and they, they were like the PT were like, "The hell is that?" And he's like, "I I wrote him an arrest warrant. What were you expecting?" <laughs> I love that. Dorky I was really no. It was like it's, it's like he hold, it's like he wrote it on it's like him holding it like on a napkin. It's like I'm really proud of this man. <laughs> I hacked a, we hacked a blimp for you and everything. That's so good. Um, there's one. Uh, so I do like I feel like the story in general very much felt like yeah because since Royal and Strikers were made at the which well first off the fact that Royal and Strikers were made at the same time is like yeah. Uh, 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 Goro Akechi, uh, Sumeri, uh, Yoshizawa, and uh, Mr. Maruki are, are all are all Mr. Non appearing in this game because this both games were made at the same time, so it was made from the perspective of a lot of people who are playing this might not have played Royal, so we're just gonna go from it from the perspective of people who have played Persona Five. So it's like it, in this, for all intents and purposes, yeah, like the Maruki stuff. I mean, it happened, but we're not going to reference it. Akechi, for all intents and purposes, is dead. Sumere is off at gymnastics camp or whatever, but we're not going to say that. Sparky's driving his cab around Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
It's all extra fluff, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, which I do think is yeah. fine because it's like I, th- I think it's. I, I would have liked to see at least like one line of di- where they add one line of dialogue where they say, "Oh, Sumeri's off like doing gymnastics." I think that would be fine, or like a reference to Maruki or something like that. Like it, it makes sense why Akechi wouldn't be here because it's like him being back. You would have to make the focus of a whole game. Yeah. It's like if you put him, if you yeah. just drop him back, it's like oh, the, then it's gonna just gonna make him all the focus, and it's like yeah, you you want to save that for like an actual like the right story yeah, I agree. as much as it would have been awesome to play as a catchy oh my gosh guess. can you imagine that motherfucker just going rampant in the metaverse yes he would be zenkichi like fury mode constantly <laughs> It's just his life. And, so, and then Sophia is just looking at him and is like, is, 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 that, is, is that also someone part of humanity? And they're all like, <laughs> uh, technically. <laughs> yes. Also, just ima- I just so it's just hard, so hard to imagine him with everybody in in, in, in their RV. Yeah, they, they would just not. Him being, <laughs> yeah, it's just him sleeping with the guys up on the roof. Dude, that tent. That t- Where yeah. did Zenkichi sleep? No, he, he, well, he's, uh, he, well, he, he's in his house, when they're in Kyoto, he's in his house, uh, I don't think, he doesn't actually sleep with them at all when they're in, like, when they're, like, traveling in their, yeah, you know, because when, when he's traveling with them in the RV, they immediately go to Kyoto, so he's there, yeah, there's never a point where he's sleeping with them in the RV, so we don't have that to worry about. In, uh, in, where, where is he sleeping when they're in Osaka? They never talk about it. They never talk about. Where- well, no, no, no. Um, well, they don't. E- no, they don't even sleep in Osaka because they immediately get attacked by zombies. No, that's you're thinking Okinawa. Okinawa. No, I don't, Okinawa, Okinawa he- is the one where they attack by zombies. Yeah, o- yeah okay. Okinawa is where he got attacked by zombies. Then they go back to Kyoto, and then they go to Osaka, and he's with them in Osaka because he drives too. He, he drives okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. He drives yeah, for, them up to Osaka. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I don't, yeah. Then I, I, I guess, yeah, because yeah, 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 they, they never, yeah, they never mention like what he's doing. I assume. Uh, he's not sleeping with I know where Zenkichi. I know where. Okay, I know where Zenkichi sleeps. Zenkichi sleeps in the Sunshine Hostess Club. No <laughs> suck. <laughs> Yakuza fans out there. <laughs> yeah, it feels like he would rent somebody. Yeah, like they, they never bring that up. So I just assume he's off somewhere else, which I I hope so. I know it's just really awkward. It's just Where really else funny would he sleep? Think about like he, he, is he curled up in the driver's seat? Because <laughs> you know the girls ain't letting him in the back, and that tent is already established no. to be full as anything with like you know ninety percent leg boy and Ryuji and Joker and a cat, not a cat. Mm-hmm. And uh, the but I, I did uh, yeah but so yes yeah, so, like the fact yeah the, that they're not there that the, the the royal stuff isn't in strikers but it does really much feel like it it like it felt to me honestly like like they they were designing strikers and they came up with the idea of Marky and his palace and his story and they're like ooh we like that let's do a whole game about that because that is pretty much what strikers is about I me mean, like the, the whole like changing desires and like Emma's whole thing about like yeah rewriting reality so like oh everybody is like complete. Com- everybody's basically complacent and it's like oh yeah that is basically just what like it, it feel like uh, it, it clo- much closer to like it's still very much kind of the same way Yaldaboth was but feel in, uh, in thematic thematically much more closer to Maraki's uh, side and also the whole like the idea of humanizing the the palace and jail rulers that was a cut that was something that was cut from royal because there was originally going to be like scenes like kind of yeah. like in the same way where you have like those right. the, the like this like at the end of the jails when they have like the 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 jail like the jail boxes and they have like the 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 hidden traumas like those like little scenes there were supposed like the will seeds yeah. were supposed to be that of like you find the will seed and then you see a little scene from one of the palace rulers pasts so again it feels like yeah like they were they came up with that and they're like ooh let let's implement that into strikers and then they put that in so it's like yeah you it very much felt like both games kind of have a lot of similar like yeah with their story of like themes kind of flowing into each other it's cause, and it's also very yeah because then like another like kind of marky esque character is uh Ichinose yeah who kind of has like that similar thing of like being like the like the kind of mentally deranged the uh, doctor a doctor character who's like who very desperately needs help but I got can't. that vibe from her the, the entire game I'm just like I am sus on her she was I'm keeping so my eye on you she was so clearly sus but I, I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't fully know like what her deal was until 
the game made it blatantly obvious because I it was it was very unclear for me like who she was aligned with, who she was potentially working with. But yeah, she was so sus from the beginning. I was oh. glad that they. I was glad that they changed. Like I like I was expecting. Like oh, she was the mastermind behind everything. Like doing that again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But for the role that she played in the game, like um, I guess it makes more sense for her. Yeah, no, I, I think it also it, has her character too. Yeah, I think I I was glad like the way they like they had like oh yeah she created Sophia slash created Emma and that's like the whole idea that she did that and she kind of had like she has her own kind of like sociopathic feelings about humanity and like life and stuff like that but she isn't actually responsible for anything that happens like oh Emma takes over like themselves and then is like hey you know say come help me and she's like okay I'll come help and then she has like that little thing of like holding off the Phantom Thieves for a little bit until she's defeated and then kind of turns around. Like, I feel like a situation like that where she does her turnaround, I kind of find, I have a bit more, I find a bit more believable, like, personally, just because, like, oh, she isn't, like, fully gone, and, like, she didn't do, like, as much, like, damage in comparison to, like, to some other characters, so I was like, okay, I can, like, buy her, and I can, like, feel, like, I can feel her a bit more, because, again, like, her damage and her, like, motivations are much more confined in comparison to like yeah like to if she was like the mastermind who controlled everything and ha forced everything like to happen in the first place mm -hmm. yeah it was an interesting idea I, I, my big i i personally felt like ichi noche's little thing was just very rushed um you know felt very crammed in but it, it was an interesting idea yeah, and, and like and even before like before she's reveal before she's revealed as being like sus uh, before she's revealed as being full sus and like showing her true colors like she she is kind of like really she's really fun and just like her her kind of her very did her her like yeah, her fake did like but it's hard I mean, we assume that it that it, that it's like her fake ditzy persona like her fake ditzy like frontal persona where she's just kind of like she she she, she she's like she's like the dumb blonde yeah uh, really yeah <laughs> Uh, and, and, and I want and I have to bring up the fact that when Emma does their true form and they become the Ark of the Covenant, and I went, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> you yeah. have the Holy Grail in the first game. Okay, a Holy Grail is like, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a thing in Christianity. It's like, oh, it's a, everything. It's like, oh, that makes sense. And then in your next game, you have the main villain turn into the Ark of the Covenant, and it's like, are you just do? So this was all just an Indiana Jones reference. <laughs> like, the next final <laughs> boss is just going to be the Crystal Skull. Well, there, yes. there, were, there were crystal skulls in Royal. Like, the, 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 the will seeds turn into crystal skulls, and the whole game is about stealing hearts, just like in Temple of Doom. This whole series is an Indiana Jones. <laughs> Like if they did one, if they did, if they had just the Ark of the Covenant and not the Holy Grail, or they had like if they had like one or the other, then it's like oh yeah, you you wouldn't think of it as being an Indiana Jones reference. But I'm like, this has to be an Indiana Jones reference. So I like I don't believe it's not because it's like why would you like like of all of the of all of the like mi mystical objects that you could go for, like you went with that. Okay, so if Atlas wants to show another Persona 5 spinoff game, they can do that. But this time, we're going to steal Harrison Ford's heart. <laughs> like, just shoo him into the game and we'll steal his heart. We'll make him not grumpy anymore. No! <laughs> also got to say my praise for, for, for the two Persona Awakenings. When 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 Zenkichi yes. has his persona awakening, and I just go, is that a motherfucking Les Mis reference? I <laughs> loved Z right. first of all Zenkichi's awakening with the his shadow like looking at him and have like the eyes glowing. I was like popping off, and then when Valjean came up, as soon as I saw the numbers, I was like, no, it's it's Les Mis. Yeah, that was that, yeah. the numbers were always such a good. Such a, also, I love that Zenkichi did the the Yusuke. Wait, when do, what, what am I wearing? <laughs> oh yeah, and and Sophia's was also fantastic with like her how her mask visor thing changed to say Pandora. That was fantastic. Oh, that was that was a nice touch. Yeah, it's like ah oh, Pandora's box. Ah, uh, get it? Cause she's trapped. Uh. Cause she's the hope. Cause she's the hope. Yeah, and I love I, I love the design of the Pandora too. I was just like, yeah, it's, it's just like a little box thing. They like like a little creature that like peeps out of a box. Like, oh, that's adorable. You know, I I, I love per uh, yeah, uh, Sophia and well Sophie and Wolf also have fantastic uh, persona like 
costume designs, too. Okay, <laughs> yes, but how does Wolf see anything? <laughs> He he just he just does. I don't know. He's a police person. He has good vision, right? His collar. He's just like Batman. He's like Batman. Yeah. He can't turn his head. I love the my one of my favorite things about Wolf is if you do any like the crazy like you know grinding on a wire or like snowboarding or whatever. He gets really. He's like woo. <laughs> he gets so excited. <laughs> you are a grown adult. <laughs> All right. Uh, l- l- uh, l- let me just go through. Let me, let me let me just quickly go through my mo- notes, seeing like the other things I want to mention. Music. Um, this, uh... We haven't discussed the music. Oh, why do oh, we the not music? Because the music yeah. is fucking amazing. It's so awesome. I love the battle themes. I love how the battle themes alternate. Yes. Between each encounter, so you're not hearing like the same thing. Like as much as I love Last Surprise in Vanilla P5. Hearing the din 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 over and over again got kind of grating. Also, that so like, at least in, here, like there's variety. And in P5R, they technically had two with Takeover and Last Surprise, but like I, I just always got Takeover <laughs> like ninety five percent of the time. It, it, well, no, it, it, in 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 Royal, it was if you if you uh, if you uh, surprise if you, if, you, if you surprise an enemy, if you ambush mm-hmm. an enemy, it's Takeover, and if you don't ambush an enemy, then it's Last. Yeah, surprise. I was almost always That's ambushing. <laughs> in, 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 but, in this in this game, uh, there is there's like an option where it's like oh you if you have a persona 5 and a persona 5 royal save file then you can like select like those so it's like from what i understand it's like if you have persona 5 then it'll play uh last surprise if you have the royal it'll play uh take over and then uh then there's the two other new songs uh uh axe to grind axe to grind and um uh, what, 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 what do you wish for those are the two. And Which one is the one that goes um da 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 What you what what do you wish for? Because that's my favorite out of the that's probably my favorite battle theme. I, I love Axe to Grind so fun. Like Axe to Grind Axe to Grind sounds like a like a waltz. Like every time I listen to it, I'm like snapping my well, fingers it has a waltz, to it. It has a waltzy tempo to it yeah. too. So it's like da, 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 da. I love Counter Strike. Oh yeah. Counter Strike is so good. I love it. Also Daredevil is no, fantastic yeah. but counter-strike caught me off guard because like a mm-hmm. uh, hot take i don't like this version of rivers in the desert as much that like i think it might be the same vocals like that they usually reuse the same vocal track but i prefer the old instrumentation um but Agreed. then it switched for kanoe's fight for the second part it switched to Dare, uh, counter-strike and i was like what is this bop it's so good <laughs> The, the first mm-hmm. time I listened to Counter Strike, yeah, because I was like, I didn't really like it because it was the first time I heard it like ever. So it's like I didn't really. You only get it like during that fight, so it's like it's, it's kind of hard to like get like a good opinion on it. But I've been li- I had like downloaded the soundtrack, so I've been listening to it like like all the time. So I've gotten I've re listened to Counter Strike multiple times. And I'm like, oh shit, yeah, this is a bop. And I love like, it. Feels like three different songs at once. Yes, it like has that like has that right. like uh, like that that like record scratch part. And again, D- Daredevil is like they somehow find a song that feels more upbeat than uh, than uh, Life Will Change somehow. Because, like Life Will Change is already like oh, an God. amazing like like fist bumping mm-hmm. pop, but then Daredevil is just like it just gets faster and faster. In the lead up to like going to like finish the the jail and like finish the boss fight, and then Daredevil kicks in. Ah, oh, it, it 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 pumps you up like there's nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, and especially because usually, like, Daredevil play like, because, like, Daredevil plays, because you have, like, the first time you're in the palace, I mean, the jail, and then you have, like, one, once you kind of, like, do the, you unlock the castle, and then Daredevil plays, but it's, like, you can go and explore, like, the palace, you can explore, like, the most of the, the jail, and then you go up the castle, so it's, like, oh, yeah, you have Daredevil plays a while, and then once you actually send the calling card, then that's when uh, Life Will Change plays. So, like, they do have, they, they find a good way of, like, implementing, like, all of the songs in. And the remix of, uh, yeah, because I, I agree that the rivers in the desert, the violins in the original feel much more epic in comparison to the electric guitars, but the electric guitars in the Last Surprise remix are so fucking godly, yeah. and it's like, every mm-hmm. time I hear it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I love it, I scream, I, I screamed the first time I heard uh, when they played the beginning of the game. And I, even beyond the battle that. themes, I really like a lot of the hub world themes, like the Sendai location. I love that piece of music so much. It's so bopping. Yeah. Um, I love a lot of the palace themes. I loved Osaka Jail. Uh, like when you're just walking through Okanoe's like crazy Tron level. 
I would say it, it yeah. annoyed me a little bit that most of the jails just have the same music. Like, at least for the initial really? exploration. Yeah, I just, I, I like oh, 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 I know. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Like, when you're in the um, first part. Yeah. The entrance. Of the level. Okay, right. Like, I, it was... It, it, the jail music did not feel at, like for e- the individual jail musics did not feel as distinctive to me as the palace themes in P five, um, but I agree. Like overall, I think the soundtrack was really good. Great soundtrack. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and also the the opening "You Are Stronger" is also a very good. Yes. One. Is it just as good I as the other ones? I love that song. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, it, it baffled me because I went into the game because I'm like, oh yeah, the Persona 5 songs are amazing. And I was like, oh, when I went to the Royal, like those new songs are amazing too. And I was like, I wasn't really thinking of the music because I'm like, oh, they, they aren't going to be able to top themselves again. And then these songs like, oh, they're just as good as those other two. Like, li- Stop li- one-upping yourself with the yes. soundtrack Persona. And it, it was also interesting Seriously. because like I, I love Blooming Villain from the original. And when I listened to the Scramble version before the game came out, I was like, mm, I don't know if I like it as much, but it in game with like the more frenetic pace of Muso, that version of Blooming Villain works really well, even if I like generally prefer the instrumentals of the original. It's just a good, like, I think a lot of Muso remixes tend to be pretty heavy on like electric guitar sort of uh instrumentation and it it, they meshed it really well for this game with blooming villain i think they tried Mm -hmm. they did a similar thing with rivers in the desert it's just with that song it's i much more strongly prefer the original I do like the be- I like the beginning of Rivers in the because like when because like the beginning of Rivers in the Desert because it's synced up to uh, uh, Akira like like f- f- suiting up in the mech yes and it's like it's timed cool. perfectly I-, I loved like and the dun and like like the way that was done but then like the actual song itself it's like oh yeah it's good uh, let me see other points uh boss fight uh, of all of, like the main boss fights I think I uh, like honestly I think I'd say all of them are pretty good except for, except for again yeah, yeah, Catherine you know the 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 uh, the uh, the doppelganger fight other than that oh, one gosh. I'd say all of the boss fights are pretty good the, it's like that 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 doppelganger fight the shadow joker fight drove me nuts like it, it was just everything that annoyed me about the combat system dialed up to 11 because you had to heal and buff yourself was just meant like yeah let me just go into the menu like pause the gameplay to go into the menu and use items uh and that was also like that was a fight where when i was having trouble with it i looked some stuff up and like advice was use buff spells use like use buff and debuff spells um and that helped but again it was just like either i blow through mp doing that or i just go into the menu and use items and also, don't use the spinny right. thing. Oh, God. Like, the spinny thing was... No, the spinny that thing was one thing almost that, killed me in that fight. That was one problem I had. And, like, in addition to that, there were sometimes instances where... I think it was the odd attack button was the same button as, like, an interactable. And sometimes you would go... Like, the game would have you go for the interactable instead of the odd attack. And I was like, thanks. I didn't want to jump up there. I wanted to do an all odd attack. Thanks game or not all out attack. What's it called when like? Oh yeah, I want to do like do, you want to do like a special attack. Oh, uh, the one where everyone no, dog piles and like comedic cloud of dust. That was oh. all out attack. Oh okay. What's it called when you what what do they call it when you get rid of the weak point gauge? Uh, that's like a super all out attack. Okay. I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's basically, I, I think they're also like that, that like, that like Showtime. Uh, Are you talking about the Showtime? No, because the no, Showtime, Showtime is when you use triangle and circle together. And it yeah, so I know. There's that. like there's just... two versions of All Out Attack. There's just like the regular one you can do to regular enemies where they just da, 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 and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And then there's the one where mm-hmm. their meters down, and then they da, 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 and then they do the actual like animation then that's in the regular off. game. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the right. pop off. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just got confused because I'm like, wait, is there a different name? But no, no the game calls it Hot Attack both times. Um, yeah, there's two all-out attacks, and then there's the Showtime. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and then like yeah, so like other yeah, the, I, I I I did find like all of, like the other like the main bosses and like like when you have like because there there are the missions in the game that you can do where you go back yeah because other than having a memento, so you go back to all the you can redo you can replay all the jails so you can like re-explore them get get any stuff you missed. There are like there are like hard enemies that you're meant to fight later on in the game. So it's like when 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 you first see like they're like oh that's that's a really hard enemy Joker and it's like it's probably not that hard. Let me fight it and then bug shows up and kicks my ass and I'm like oh, how fuck. hard can it be level 56 <laughs> bugs <laughs> get wrecked son the fucking teddy bear killed me <laughs> so it's like yeah it's like, yeah, it's like they want you to go back then they introduce yeah they, they have those harder ones then like Lavenza comes in and is like oh they're these are like special like uh, harder personas you can go and like track down and that'll like give you the opportunity to then like get those like uh hard those like more powerful personas later on uh it's like you have the and then you can do like one of the missions is oh refighting the boss fights and it's like oh i actually enjoyed doing that because i found those bosses pretty fun like once you one the, the first times you fight them you might get like tripped up a bit of like oh figuring out like what their pattern is but it's like oh once you know like you once you know like what you're supposed to do then it's like oh yeah i i i, I found like, i had like a good enjoyment of it. like i i i, I enjoyed going back and like Refighting. The pattern and, and the interactables, because I, I don't know if I was the only one who got messed up with the Mariko fight where I used the chandeliers before, like I used the chandeliers up before the first time she did her I ate someone attack and then I couldn't get them back and that didn't go well. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I did that too. Of like, yeah, you, you, yeah, because like you normally you're like, oh, you want to like get rid of those things for like easy attacks, but it's like, oh no, you're supposed to keep them for strategy. Yeah. And yeah, same same thing with uh, same thing with with uh, not 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 Sume. Like when he's doing his charge up, you have to like oh use the environment in order to like kind of stop him from charging up. Yeah, yeah. And then like yeah, and even like both. And I really like the final. I really like the final the the final boss of like oh you give because I was assuming like oh do you just pick four characters to fight? But it's like no, you get to play as everybody and you split them up into like teams of uh, you get to split them up into like team uh, three teams of three. And like oh I thought I was I think it was really cool. Like you get a chance to play as everybody in that final encounter. Yeah, that was really. Yeah, cool. I thought that was a cute idea. It's freaking Final Fantasy VII all over again. That's, I was thinking FF7, oh, yeah. <laughs> FF6 sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, it's pretty for me. I was like mine. It was like it was on on Ryuji and um, uh, Morgana. Then it was Makoto, Haru, and Yusuke, and then Joker, uh, Sophia, and Zenkichi in the middle. Because it's like, oh yeah, because the the things weak to things weak to bless. So it's like, yeah, of course you just use Joker and uh, Sophia to spam bless. The other thing I'll say is that I love the uh, the menus and the transitions in this game. Oh, uh, the aesthetics the... are great They're as always. Stylish. That's one thing Persona is always consistent with, especially with um, the games in Five. I love every time you transition to a new level, the Joker comes in, does a front flip, leaves off screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, even though it's slow as fuck on Switch. <laughs> 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 I managed. I managed. Yeah, and loving just the general idea of like, oh, like, it's like you, you like in the, at the very beginning, like when you're exploring, because I w- again, I wasn't expecting this when you're exploring like. Uh, Yonganjaya and like Shibuya and all that stuff. It's like you only have like small section. It's like oh, you only have those small pockets of the world. But it's like oh no, you're traveling all over Japan, so you get to go to like six six other places. So, like oh that that that's really cool. You get like these little pockets of, of the of like the world to explore, each with their own like stuff to buy. And so it's like oh like that they, they, it was something like really fun the, that like the that spiced things up. I absolutely agree with that. The one thing I was sad about is that we didn't get to explore Kyoto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, yeah, because I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, like, I was about to say, like, is there a way? That, is there a way that you could have like put it in? And I'm like, oh yeah, technically you could have had, yeah, just like in uh, Okinawa, have like a beginning section and then have, have like an end section when you're exploring. Like, yeah, you they they they, uh, they could have made that work. Oh, I was like, yeah, because you did that in Okinawa. If you have like the section of like you're on you're on the beach just chilling, and then you have like the section right before you leave. So I was like, yeah, they could have made that work. And Yusuke finds his lobsters. He <laughs> finds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of other like really like great mo- uh, great just standout moments. Zenkichi like... learning how to cook. <laughs> yes. Fine, oh, the, yeah. no, the um, Ryuji saying fuck. The, yes. the, 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 be- the, be- oh, the best. Oh, that's the, the, the best top moment of the game. <laughs> The, the best f bomb, yeah. Because like, yeah, Ryuji doesn't like Ryuji doesn't get like a, like a real like a quote. I mean, like M- Makoto kind of gets like a little bit of an arc like relating to Akane and like how like they're like dealing with like oh like a parent a parent who's an officer and like oh how do you adjust to that? Uh, you yeah. And then uh, Ryuji and Morgan Ryuji and Morgana don't really have arcs, but their whole arcs are pretty much just being like fuck you. But it's like okay, the the the, the, the that's that's okay. I'll take yeah. It. <laughs> 
I liked in Sendai when you posed with Yusuke in the cutouts. And you could say, like, that you're Yusuke's wife now. Oh, when well, you can go on dates with the boy! Yes! <laughs> yes, the dates! The correct the option. Dates. Yeah, for one of those dates I went on, I, I think it was the one where you went on the Ferris wheel in Sapporo, I think? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I did that with the boys, and they were like, wait, what are we doing here? <laughs> Why are we doing were you, this? Ryuji's like, what the hell are we doing here? And Yusuke's like, I'm okay with it. Yes. <laughs> no, I I did I I, I did uh, for both that and the tower. I forget where the tower was uh, in uh, Osaka. Uh, I did uh, I, I like I like I like I, I save scummed because I wanted to see what all the interactions were. So like I did all of like the I, I saw all of, like the girl ones and it's like oh like it, each of the each of the girl ones were like oh it's like it's what you expect. On is like you're basically on is you cucking Morgana. So it's like it's a little awkward. And then, uh, yeah, and then the, the one in, the one, uh, on the tower, it's like, you have all the girl, you, you're all, the, it, it, it becomes, like, the, uh, the stereotypical harem thing of, like, oh, Joker, which one of us do you like, hmm? Hmm? Gosh. And then the boys is just them being goofballs trying to do a pose. So it's like, yeah, the boys is the better option. The cutscenes are cute. There was this one moment, um, when you're going into the Sapporo jail, and it's the cold ice winter <laughs> one, and everyone's, like, freezing, and then they cut to Sophia... And she somehow bundled her body into, like, an igloo. Yes, she's, like, just made herself into a little lump. And Mona's covered in snow. Oh, that was so funny. Oh, and, and that, that also leads into the second best moment in the game, the hee horde. Yes! Oh, yeah, the Jack Frosts. The hee horde. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing a preview of that. Like, that was, that was like, the one clip that I saw um before playing the game because i didn't want to spoil myself as much as possible but like i saw the hee host being shared on twitter i'm like oh my god yes. i love it and everyone's just saying hee ho hee ho yes. <laughs> and then Ma and then makoto just ends it with cool bit now let's go yeah. <laughs> it's like that, that that's just one of my favorite like just kind of snark lines of just cool bit now let's go hard driving <laughs> <laughs> yes oh god <laughs> I like just how the transition is violent, <laughs> like the car just goes crazy. <laughs> and then everyone just comes in dead. Everyone's <laughs> dead. Yeah, because they 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 like they, te they tease it the entire game of like, oh, Haru's like, oh, why don't I why don't I drive for you? And she's like, uh, no, it's okay. It's like it's fine. So you're like, oh no. And then when it finally happens, it's like, oh yes. I love um Cherry Lee's delivery, which he's like, um, I never told you all this, but Haru is, um, different when she's driving. <laughs> like, she's, like, <laughs> she's special. Yes. Although, if we're, if we're saying good moments, we also have to say the bad moments, which is the stereotypical hot, hot spring scene. Oh my gosh. Which is, uh, Can we stop with fine. this not funny joke, Why Atlas? Do Mm, yeah. You didn't do it in Persona 5, it was fine, and then you had to do it in here, and it's like, oh. Sai. And Sai so, is technically in this game. Technically. Uh, and I love how they couldn't model. be bothered to put her model in the game! <laughs> they just, like, she had, they had a portrait, and they had her VA on the phone. <laughs> but, like, they were like, model? Mm, too much work. It was a surprise, because at the beginning of the game, you're like, let, let, let's, let's go see EY! He's not there. Let's go. Let's go see. Let, 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 let's go see uh, Takami. She's not there. So you're just expecting uh, Sai. No, because then at the beginning you're like, oh, how about we contact Sai? And she's like, oh, she's busy. So you're just expecting she's not going to show up. But then she does, and it's like, oh, that's a genuinely a surprise. And it's a, I also like the continuity of she became a defense attorney, mm -hmm. and she helped out Zenkichi. And, and Futaba has that. Futaba has that great line of like, oh, she's she's probably just gonna go like do her thing of being like, answer me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, you you have you have a lot. Yeah, because you have a lot of like those like little like wink of the nods. You have like that. You have like Futaba going and the thing like, oh, why don't we give him a last surprise? Yes. Or you, and you have like yeah, Ryuji saying Ryuji saying fuck, which is obviously like the payoff of the memes. It, it's a weird moment, but it's like, well, for, again, uh, since they still don't know what to do regarding Igor, so Lo he's also missing, yeah. but you do have Lavenza here. Which, but I, I honestly, I think it's kind of a plus because it allows, like in Royal, the third semester, it allows Lavenza to be like, 
like more of a character and allows her like to be able to do like to be able to do like I, I like kind of her thing where she's like where she calls in when she calls every time she calls in Joker she's like very nervous like oh I'm really sorry I'm calling you in here but it's like I need you to do do this thing I, I hope it isn't bothering you and when it's like when when you're like when you if you say something you like words like oh when you say when you're like being like nice to her she's like oh like you're you're so nice it's like it's like oh it's like I like it's like I do like it's like I like her and she even has like a moment like once you complete all of the mission like once you basically 100 percent like the re the main campaign she has like a moment where she pretty much almost confesses to you and it's like it's weird but it's also kind of cute <laughs> She's cute. I, I, there's a part of me that will always, like, I like Lavenza, but there's a part of me that still misses the dichotomy of Justine and Caroline, <laughs> but, but Lavenza's really cute. At least you have dan mm -hmm. the dancing games for that. The dancing games at least gave him more. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, uh, I, I was disappointed that there wasn't more because that was something I loved about third semester was that it allowed like the rest of the fandom theme. Like there was the whole like the scene when she comes to the real world and all the fandom these are talking about. It's like, oh yeah, there is not just, she's not just Joker's pet. She's like everybody's, but it's like, no, it's just Joker again. And like, he never mentions her to anybody. I'm like, why not at this point? Just tell them. Yeah. Yeah, it's like other than that, and then like uh, the way the the end the ending kind of like I, uh, I, I it, the ending works better if it's uh, the, again under the perspective of Royal because Royal has the whole thing of like, like the Royal has the whole thing of like oh the characters all go their separate ways and then like so it, it makes them coming back in this game feel like a bigger deal rather than like in the original uh, Persona Five it was just oh only Joker left and they all just kind of stayed back so it's like only Joker making a homecoming so it makes them all like coming back for summer vacation and then leaving again at the end of this game it makes it feel much more like impactful if you're like mm -hmm. looking at it from the royal from the royal perspective because it's like oh yeah these guys like oh you really you really feel like you really feel like these guys like you like you like you really like like them together like they have like such like a, a nice bond even though it's like oh it's only been three months when she last see, seen each other and it's like three months is nothing yeah and then you have like, and I was expecting because they kept going like, oh, Sophia's gonna like come with you, and I'm like, yeah, sure she is, sure Sophia's gonna come with you. It's like I want that to happen, but that's not gonna happen. And then Ichinose shows up at the last minute, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna go with her. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. See you never. I did like her seeing her be all like, I tried to turn myself into the police, but they all thought I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty hard to explain. <laughs> It's like, yeah, technically, at least she didn't do anything, like, technically illegal. So it's like, it's fine. She, so she's fine. She can get away with it. Yeah. yeah, other than that, and it's like, yeah, I think that that is pretty much, that is pretty much most of what uh, Strikers, I mean, they, they, they've got, they've got a lot of, like, good, like, they, 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 they've got, like, a lot of, like, decent mission, the, the bonus mission stuff that give you, like, extra to do other than uh, the regular game. Uh, then they have, have the new game plus where you play it on, like, the hardest difficulty with all of your personas and, like, stats and stuff. Oh, yeah, there, there, there's the, there's the uh, to replace a social, to replace social links, they have, like, the bond skill tree, where, like, you just keep getting, like, bond points throughout the game, and then you can use those to kind of update your, like, pretty much every single, like, gameplay and, like, presentation stat, like, stat you can think of, you can upgrade. Tons of content. Tons of content. Lots of content. Yeah, and I, I think I think my game took about I think I took about fifty hours. I think that was what my final playtime was. And I, I I did like take my time and like did a lot of like replaying of like the missions, like doing like replaying those like missions and stuff like that. So I was like, oh yeah, I I got I got like a decent I got like the a fair like I thought I thought it was a good length. Like I was glad with how long mm -hmm. it lasted. My one big hope is that after this game. Like I know the room, like the, not the rumor, but the hope that the the assumption is Persona Five Arena next, and I'm like, I kind of don't want that because I don't want like the next Persona Five story game to be that fighting game where pretty much the story is just told in uh, static PowerPoint cutscenes, and I'm like, I want like an actual full story, like like this game. I want to have like a full story where Akechi, Sumire, um, uh, Sophia, Zenkichi. I guess technically Maruki, because he's also a Persona user, like, have all 13 Persona users all come together in one, like, big story. I think that would be really cool to see. Either that, or do, like, like you've mentioned, Catherine, a a full three Persona 3 and 4 crossover, like they did with Q. Yeah. No, that, I, if they're doing a fighting game, they, they're going to have to branch out of the Persona 5 cast. There's not enough fighters for that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have any uh, you have any last minute uh, uh, things you want to say? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, 
Uh, it's probably my favorite Persona spinoff to date. Like, compared to, like, the fighting games and the music rhythm games, I was surprised how the music was amazing. The story was actually pretty decent. It actually feels like a Persona game aside from the main combat, and the main combat was not as mindless as I thought it was going to be going in. I died a lot in normal mode, and there is a lot of thought you have to put into how you approach the battles, and it was engaging. I, I was glued to the screen, I wanted to see what happened next, and it definitely caught me by surprise. Um, so yeah, I would recommend Persona 5 Strikers. If you think it's just going to be a Musou game, I think there's a lot more going on in this than typical Koei Tecmo adventures. And uh, it's a fantastic addition to the series. Would recommend. Love it. Like, um, speaking as a big Persona fan, and like, I know I don't have that much experience with Persona games. It's just a really fun time. I actually binged through it, <laughs> which I don't do often with video games. But um, I beat Strikers in like five days, six days. <laughs> yeah, I kind of went crazy with it. But um, just it was just a great experience. Um, like we've said before, there are certainly issues with it. Like it's not a masterpiece story wise compared to the original game, but it didn't have to be. I just wanted a fun game um, with the cast again. And that's what the, this game is. So yeah, love it, love it, love it. Yeah, I think I probably am the least, like, <laughs> enjoyed it the least out of everyone in this call. I I think for me the character interactions were the highlight. I didn't find the story as strong as P5R, um, but I wouldn't discourage people from playing it. It's just, it wasn't quite what I was, it didn't quite click for me gameplay-wise, and the story was, you know, it's a, it's... It's not, a, it's not an RPG, so it, do, it doesn't have the runtime to develop a story as much as P5. Um, but I'm, I still enjoyed the purchase. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, yeah, it was a game where the, yeah, again, it's just like I, I, I had like yeah, I had such a blast uh, playing it. Yeah, from just just how just how fun the how how fun the combat was, and uh, just uh, how much fun I had like just watching the character, just watching the characters do their thing, uh, seeing the story play out. It's just it, it's just like an overall of just how much just it really just the helping cl clarify and emphasize how much I love like yeah the Persona Five world and these characters and just wanting to see like more of them and just yeah, and, and making me want to like yeah check out like more of like the warriors game because again like i do i love like just come like the, these fast-paced like uh combat games in general so it's like oh i want to try more of these out like not just like in even though i like like how it did it in the persona style i also just want to like try out more of these games so it's like oh it wants me to check out more of their work too uh, do, do you guys uh, you guys do you guys have anything you want to quickly plug if you like writing <laughs> um, I guess you could um, I guess you could go to my website I write stuff about gaming and wrestling yeah <laughs> go to caratero.com <laughs> I'm the Greg Clement I'm on YouTube you guys know me you know <laughs> right now I'm doing a playthrough of Luigi's Mansion coming up next is a playthrough of an underrated PlayStation 2 classic uh, Steambot Chronicles. I hope you all enjoy it when I start playing that later this summer. And, uh, yeah. Nice to be back. Anything you want to plug, Quathrin? <laughs> no, I just, I just share bad opinions on Twitter. <laughs> all right, thank, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, just slightly over two hours. I was right. I told, we're, 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 we're gonna, like, we're, we're, we're gonna keep making ourselves worse before we get, before we keep getting better at this. <laughs> See you guys on another thing. Maybe. Or not. We're not your dads. <laughs> now get out.